Welcome to Blind Submissions, where DIY bands submit songs for us to listen to and react to blind. Every week, we'll bring a guest from the underground music, arts, or entertainment scene to help you sort through mountains of new music. We go in blind so you don't have to. Blind Submissions. Blind Submissions! Hey everybody. Welcome to today's episode of... Blind Submissions. submissions. Can you hear me? Yeah, can, can you, you hear me, Jeff? I, I can hear you can now. You, can you all hear me? Can you hear me now? Because you couldn't hear me last episode. <laughs> oh no, JD was so quiet. We tried to fix it. <laughs> this time. It's all good. Oh my god, look at the, the we'll little, crank everything. The little pattern on the on the recorder. Your laugh is like was like perfectly spaced there. You're like, oh, ooh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Lay that on the grid and quantize that shit. I'm good. I've got everything down. I, I laugh in a four four. <laughs> Um, like perfect, right on. <laughs> Can you laugh in five or seven? Though? And I also have perfect pitch in my laugh. Ha, 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 it's ha, insane. Ha, 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 ha. I could probably not laugh in five seven though. No. <laughs> well, just five, just five, just five. <laughs> just do it five times and then make the sixth one louder. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ha 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 ha. That's all it is. All right, it's not hard. Little, me- little lesson there. Wow, what a strange diversion to start an episode, right? Well, hey, we're coming off a fucking hell of an episode last week. Hell of an episode, holy shit! Per- people on the internet liked having us talk to Mike Scheidt. For yeah, sure. apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's like they like that guy or something. Yeah, it's like he has interesting <laughs> things to say. Like he's yeah. a good, like he's a good dude or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <sighs> lots of interesting things. Lots of bands too. I yeah. think that's the thing that really stood out to me is like. You know, most everybody we talk to is into music, obviously, because a lot of them are musicians or they're involved in the industry. But like, man, you know, he's hunting down. He is hunting down yeah. new music. He's finding new music. He like he loves the thrill of the hunt. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that was a little interesting. It was interesting, a little bit unique. Mm-hmm. So uh, th- this week's guest actually came up in oh, last week's episode. Wow! Because they're one of those bands that I know and love who then submitted music to us. Uh, we talked about him oh. last week, Eight Bells, and uh, mm. we have Melinda Jackson, who is the front person, singer, guitar player, so- songwriter, Heck yeah. uh, and they have a new record coming out soon on Prophecy Productions. Yeah, I think this month, right? Yeah, I think so. I think there are three maybe? songs out, so let's not jibber-jabber yeah. let's too not much. Jibber-jabber. Let's listen to a Ooh. little bit of a track from the yeah. new Eight Bells record that is coming and then have a little chit chat here with Melinda. Also a Portland band, right? Another Portland band. Another Portland band. Another Portland band. You like that, huh? That was, that was good. Another that was Portland really good. band. All right. I love I, it. I prepped for this and yeah. I completely closed my tab that had, oh, good. that had it open already. You people listening are yeah. They released shit. three of the albums out of three of the albums, three of the songs it's out of three six. Of the songs. So this um, is Nadir. I never know how to say that word. I always think, oh, I'm going to look I this up know. to make sure Nadir I get it. Nadir to make sure I get it right. And um, these are not people who write short songs in yob like fashion. So I'm going to start about a minute and a half into this one. So it's can, a good idea. Yeah.
And welcome aboard. There she is. We were just lis listening to some music from your upcoming record. That when is it? It comes out this month, right? The twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. Are you excited? Do you get excited when releases here? You've probably been done with it forever, right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we recorded it during the fires that were happening in Oregon. So what was that? Twenty. That was a year ago. That's time. I don't even understand it anymore. So yeah. <laughs> sh sure, we'll go with the year ago. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It, it, yeah. So, and also, it's uh, just even making this. Everything took a long time and was pretty fairly full of struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty good description for a life for the last two years or so. It's Plus, hard. yeah exactly I, I remember seeing seeing you and billy post pictures you know mid mid recording mid production i was getting so excited and then of course I, I i should know better than to think that it's going to come anytime soon that's just not how things work <laughs> especially now i feel like uh billy is so fun to record with you know and we're pretty goofy we get pretty goofy so oh, that's, a, that's a fun time yeah, he's Sit around the, telling dad jokes. the king of the worst jokes in the world. <laughs> he, no one has more bad jokes than him. Good bad jokes. Yeah, they're yeah, good. Oh, no, they're the good. best. No. I mean, bad I, jokes are the best jokes. I, I felt <laughs> ashamed at my attempts at bad jokes around Billy. It was like I wanted to go home and write so that I would have good ones. Come back with some good puns. Totally. Right. <laughs> the puns are pretty difficult. I cannot keep up at all. And I'll think of one like in the middle of the night as I drift off to sleep and I'll just be like, Fuck, I failed again. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. That's always where you think of the best stuff. That's where you think of the best comebacks. And then, yeah. you, forget, yeah, and then you forget it because you go to sleep. Yeah, so. I have this bad I have this bad habit of listening to like demo and practice recordings as I fall asleep. And I Ugh. always like my head fills with ideas and then I fall asleep <laughs> and then I wake up and they're all gone. Like I have great brainstorms for little tweaks or little things to do here and there and then just poof nothing yeah i'll be doing something like vacuuming my car and i'll be like what is that that i'm singing in my head right now you know because there'll be like a usually like some kind of melodic thing looping in my head and i'm like what is that and then i'll go humming into my phone and then a couple days later i'll listen to it and i'll be like i can't tell what the fuck that is <laughs> you know? Oh, that, what was I thinking? <laughs> I had one of those moments in practice this week where you like learn a riff and it's really simple, right? It was like five or six notes and we cycled it for, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes just to like get the feel. And then we went and played another song and then we came back to it. And I, if you had asked me under penalty of death to replay that riff, it was just not in my head or in my fingers or anywhere to be found. I had to like make somebody else play it. I Probably like, dropped oh. it on the floor. Did you get on the floor? I did. I, our, flo our floor's messy. It makes me feel good that you have that problem, just because I have that problem sometimes, a lot, actually. Where I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, you know? Like, what was it? Yeah. So, is so it, that's is how it, I record things. Do you think that's the universe telling us that that was a bad idea? No. Or just there's no. a lot of really great music that never got made because people forgot it? <laughs> I mean, sure. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. That's why I started um, when we're writing new stuff. I feel once I get like – I play bass. So once I get like all the way through and have a rough structure of what I want to play, I'll set up a camera and film my hands. And then I don't ever have to worry that I'm going to completely oh, forget forget what i did it feels weird to like point a camera at your hands and play but i've i've gone back to it a bazillion times especially like we didn't play for a year so we had we had records worth of songs written down and i didn't have any film but we had recordings at least so. you had a hard a hard drive full Fuck. of finger oh, no. <laughs> videos no i started after that i started after you should that just put those up on youtube <laughs> There's probably some weird fetish site where people want to see close-ups of base fingers. <laughs> base fingers. Oh. Let's go to YouTube right now and search base fingers. I know. I think I just willed it into existence, unfortunately. Yeah. It'll be like that foot, that celebrity foot archive where every oh. every famous female celebrity finds out they have pictures of their feet online with like ratings and reviews. What? Oh yeah, it's creepy as shit that's fucking weird yeah it's so it's so weird wow but if wow. you Dude, if you what <laughs> yeah, sorry right? i didn't mean i didn't mean to just drop that right now on you what but rabbit hole are you taking us down jeff <laughs> hey 
I don't know. I, just, but I, was, I was thinking about it. I was like, I wonder what Madonna's feet look like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, this show is all about going down ra- unexpected. Going down some rabbit, rabbit holes. So. <laughs> well, while. Uh oh. Oh. No, I don't. I well, didn't. Jeff is pulling that up. Uh, one thing that we discussed, actually, <laughs> before you came in, the song that we played in, uh, is it Nadir? Nadir. Yeah. Na- Nader? Nadir? Nadir. Yeah. Nader. Yeah. Nader. Like, okay. I'm always self-conscious about saying it. I look at it, and I think I know what I should say, and then it's just like the like the bass line. It just leaves my head. <laughs> it's not really a word I, I, would, I would ever really necessarily use, except to name this song. Yeah. What does actually, it mean? Ma- it's like Matt, the... Matt actually made it up. Um, mm. It's the lowest point. Yeah, it's the can... bottom. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, interesting. World yeah. celebrity feet on Instagram. Okay, oh, maybe. Geez. Maybe. That's not. That's not no, awesome. we're good. Um, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> we don't need to check out feet. So we we caught you guys at Psycho when you played on the vinyl stage, 2018. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, I don't know why both of us were just in the right headspace for that set to be really like heavy. It was it was weird. Oh, it was incredible. I, yeah, I just found myself at the front of the stage going, "What? Are, what is my life? Like, what am I? <laughs> what am I doing?" <laughs> kind of what I the way I feel when I go see Yob. Uh, you know, talking to Mike last week was similar. It was just you start to rethink all of your decisions. <laughs> N- not all bands do that. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, weekend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did you guys Do you remember much of it? <laughs> we we chatted afterward about the bullshit merch situation. I remember because yeah. it, was a, it was a total nightmare. But do you have any other good horror stories? Usually, people have fun horror stories from Psycho. People that play. Um, well, the merch thing was funny because it was because they wanted like we're in the green room getting ready to go on and us to come get and take away our merch right then oh and it was like a big deal because i hadn't been able to get a hold of me to do it but i wasn't checking my email so i don't know it, the merch was the was a pain in the ass and, and to like and we didn't sell you know like, it, it, <sighs> i saw that room but it was just I don't know. You know, Las Vegas really isn't my kind of jam at all. You yeah. know, so, like, to be honest, you know, it's not a great time for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, definitely there were fun moments and stuff and I, and it was enjoyable and I feel really glad that we got to play it, but Las Vegas is just real weird for me. Yeah. Um, it's, a little it's bit not weird. for everyone. So it, it shouldn't be. The day we play it, it's just in my hidden room. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine there are a few people like that. I'm, you know, for work, I end up having to go there a lot. So I'm sort of worn down and I I know how to exist in Las Vegas because I have to. But yeah, it it can go, it can go bad real fast there if you're not careful. It just bums me out. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, it's too goddamn hot. Why would you do that? Yeah, that too. Like I'm standing out. Like I'm not getting but it's hot, you know? And then how much is water? Whatever, you know? Like, I, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't want to start doing this whole bitching thing because I'm really, really good at it. Probably All right. Get Ooh. Going. We'll keep, we'll, so this is something I wanted to ask about. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. So okay. obviously we're, I'm a big fan of the music. Both of us are. I absolutely love this new album cover. T- talk to me oh. about where it came from. Who did it? What was, is there any, is there a story behind it? Uh, there, you know, there's, there's this guy named Tom Roberts on uh, in Instagram, Tom Roberts Illustration, and I just was kind of enamored with his his drawings, you know. And so, um, I contacted him about doing the art, and I kind of told him the concept of the album and and the idea that I had had about there being two worlds, you know. There's the one that's on top and most obvious, and then the the one that sucks, which is inside the well, you know? So you're gazing into a well, okay, and it's on fire. Oh. Yes. I see that now. And there's this, I like the weird pastoral shit around the edge of the well, but then inside the well, it's all bad. Yeah. That's yeah, really, I mean, really the cool. song, so... The Well, that song is about, kind of about, uh, you know, like, a pastoral life 
a little bit. It reminds me of um, Neil Gaiman wrote a but one of my favorite books uh, called Neverwhere, and it's just about this person living life in London, and then one day finds out there's just a whole city underneath London that's like like a city of monsters and horrors and mythical shit and and everyone's just completely unaware of it and it's been there the whole time uh-huh. it's, i always i always love that as sort of a concept for exploring ideas like parallel worlds yep yeah so you just found this guy on instagram like it was just an artist that you followed yeah oh, wow. yeah so he, he's amazing i think it's called is it tom roberts illustration i think it is and, and that- he, he Wow. He had done a uh, some other album cover, but I don't I don't think that he does a lot of album cover artwork. I'm not sure. But yeah, 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 it's it's interesting. Like on the one hand, I love that there are these like stalwart album artists that kind of give scenes um, kind of a unified look. I mean, who where would we be without um, Roger Dean? You know, and all the all the killer covers he did in the seventies, or, or or now without like an Adam Burke, who like as soon as an Adam uh, Adam Burke cover pops up, you know exactly you know you know exactly who did it and mm-hmm. what it is. But then I also like bringing in different perspectives, people people we don't see over and over and over again, that do do the art in a different way. This artist was actually pretty thrilled with it because he it's a different kind of. If you look at his other drawings, you'll see that it's a, it's the same, but it's quite a bit different. Um, so he was excited to do something different, you yeah. know, uh, than what he normally does. He's kind yeah. of all about mythology and yeah, you know, he's this really is really cool. Yeah, we're kind of flipping through his Instagram right now, and it looks awesome. Yeah. I guess I could share yeah. that so that other people could see it, but we've given him enough airtime. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm kidding. No, it's really cool stuff. He does a lot. It looks like he does a lot of like feminine forms and not necessarily yeah. like fairies and angels and demons and these are really cool these, like what these like bird women yeah you have like wing they have wing, feathered wings and stuff and like there's like an archer and then there's you know uh an elk one that's really interesting i don't know his art's really pretty amazing yeah, yeah Jeez, I'm gonna have to see if he has some prints available. It, does, it, almost, <laughs> it almost has like a waterhouse feel or something like that to me. Yeah, and and I think because it's so different, it really stands out, and because of the composition of the cover itself, not just the art, but like the kind of the cutout around the art, and then the blank kind of off white background around it, it just it like comes out of the page in a really cool way. Mm-hmm. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that was Ross Sewage. Oh, Ross did, did it. For- yeah, we had he did the layout for the CD and the LP. Very yeah. nice. So one of the things that we talked about, Mike, with um, last week because it came it came up and it continues to come up. I know you guys are a Portland band at this point, right? More mm-hmm. more or less is that you're part of the Bay Area diaspora. All the mm-hmm. artists that got pushed out of the Bay Area, um, I would assume, or at because least of, just left or left <laughs> because of cost of living or just you know not being I mean, what it what it was before what what are your thoughts about that when did you, you know guys leave? It, uh, i left i got here in 06 i think so yeah. i made it through the whole dot-com thing living in super shitty flats rent controlled <laughs> flats and like living with five people and whatnot but i you know and i was having a hard time staying employed there um And then I started kind of panicking about how like I would never have enough money to get out of there, but I wouldn't have enough money to stay there either. Mm. And so I had friends here that could help me with lining up a job and, and a room and a place to live until I, you know, got somewhere uh, with the job. So like, I just did it. I just packed up my shit and left. And it was really difficult thing to do because, you know, I left behind my old drummer and like lots of friends. And I even like felt a little bit like almost like a, like a, like I had one person say something to me about like, Oh, you're moving to, to the, uh, the whitest city ever, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I mean, when do you hang out with any people of color on the bus? Like when, what, you know, like, (laughs) I don't know. It was kind of like, it was almost like a few people were, like I, I don't know. It's almost like I felt like a sellout for leaving. 
That's interesting. There, there is a. I mean, this is a dangerous topic, and so we should maybe not get, not, <laughs> not get into it. But it, but I think it's worth talking about, and that is that like, you know, sometimes if you tend to be on the progressive uh, side of things, sometimes there's a little bit of clinging on too hard to certain ideas, like like don't you can't move to Portland because there's only white people there, and I I've thought it myself. Like I have relatives in Bend, and if you think Portland's white, <laughs> go to Bend. Yeah. And yeah. it, it's really easy to be progressive in Bend because they don't have any of the problems that come with the poverty that comes from, you know, systemic racism and all of that stuff. So everyone can be super liberal because life's easy, up, you know, for the most part for a lot of people up there. But it, but no, oh man. But anyways, Portland's a diverse city. As far as America goes, like you can go to a lot of places that are less diverse than Portland. But that's a very o- Oakland or San Francisco thing to say, I feel like. <laughs> well, and also it was like a badge, like in a weird way for a while, I, I wore it like a badge mm-hmm. of honor that I made it through that whole gentrification thing where they were like throwing people out of their flats who'd been in them for years and you'd see senior citizens panhandling because there was no rent control and all that, like that I lived through that and managed to stay housed um, and managed to keep finding like cheap places to live yeah like, it's kind of like you know like kind of i don't know it's kind of like a badge of honor or something and then like i i just i don't know i just got to a point where i was like i'm never going to get out of here and what's yeah. here what's actually here anymore you know that's the truth yeah we we're having a little bit of a reverse phenomenon thanks to the pandemic though a lot of tech bros leaving the world rents coming down in oakland and san francisco <laughs> you know, uh, in, to be going up here, I have no fucking idea why. It's because yeah, everybody's, cause everybody's here and going everybody's there. Going there. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. And ev- and everyone thinks that whenever they did it, that was the that was the time when it was still okay. But anything after that was yeah. too, was yeah. too late. <laughs> of course. I don't know, of man. So but big... what 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 made you actually just do it? You just finally decided, gotta go. You know, Nate Carson friend, mm. and assuring me that it was helping me to decide that it was a good move. And um, my band kind of like fell apart. Subarachnoid space it was, you know, my drummer was having some issues and we weren't able to re- remain active. And it was just the right time, I think. But a big part of it was Nate being like, yeah, we can find you a place to live. And my Always other friend gave you a job, and I was like, "Well, that's more than I have. I don't have a job here, like you know." Yeah, so, I've never Don't been unemployed good. here. You know, I was <laughs> yeah, unemployed not... in a few times. So. Yeah, that that's good. I mean, we've we've contemplated the move a, a bazillion times, and I have a kid going to college in Oregon now, so it makes it even more tempting to to do it. I don't know. I say that a lot. We haven't done it yet, so. That's yeah, what every well, college kid wants is for their there. family to move into town with them. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. not moving. I'm not moving to fucking Eugene. I, I'll be two hours. Oh, oh yeah, no, no. I could never. I could never live in Eugene either. One time we played a show in, in Eugene, and it was really funny. There was this lady dancing, and she was dancing all crazy, and she had her head shaved on on both sides, and like a mohawk kind of thing. And on one side it said "eat," and on the other side it said "shit." And she was <laughs> totally dancing. Like what? This is crazy. She was like one of the five people that were there. <laughs> Good times. I think she's Good actually time. one of the philosophy professors at U of O. Oh, she's a U of O yeah. philosophy. No, I don't. I'm kidding. No. Yeah. I'll ask my daughter if she's seen her. <laughs> yeah, you've seen the YouTube. Wow, you. Were <laughs> um, so you were pretty convincing with that. I was going to be like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, he's good at that. Um. I, I know things aren't normal yet, but are what are you guys doing to support the release? You know, normally there would be shows and maybe a tour and all of that bullshit. What do you get? Is there, is there much going on? We've told Nate that we're ready to um, start thinking about shows and touring again. Um, you know, it's just a little, it's just so weird right now because everything gets canceled, you know, like, stuff gets booked mm-hmm. and then it gets canceled and then it's postponed and you know it's just sort of like it's difficult to manage something like that when everybody you know works jobs yeah, you gotta <laughs> so request not, time off and yeah i gotta get my pto or whatever <laughs> lined up and 
and uh and like you know so it's a pain in the ass if it changes and you have to go back to your work and be like you you know but i mean yeah i think we're we're getting ready to 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 want to be able to do those things now it feels weird not to have like a a show booked for the release or whatever but we let nate know that we're ready to start thinking about it so that's good. He he may know the right people from what I've from what I've seen so far. From what you understand <laughs> he, about Nate, he might be able to help. Yeah. Um, how's it been on Prophecy so far? This is your first release with them. We've, I, I know a ton of Prophecy artists. You know, you're the Cobra sweatshirt on right now. Uh, Amy yeah. and John, are, Amy and John are good friends. Um, what's what's Amber the experience? As well, oh, yeah. um, they're you know they're they're really nice. I'm I'm. I'm happy with them. I mean, and they make beautiful packaging, which is, they do. you know, it's kind of important. So I don't have any, you know, anything bad to say about them. Just give me time. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> well, I mean, sure. I, I've also noticed they're pretty good at getting folks placement on some of the, some of the big and fun European festivals. So hopefully that's a thing. At some I would point. like to play that cave in Germany. Oh, hell yeah. I would totally that would be amazing to do like you know yeah that was but like the problem with europe is getting actual booking for other shows in europe so that you can afford to go to the festival that you want to play or whatever yeah so you know it's... well i hope that being on prophecy will help a little bit with that yeah yeah i, w I would love to I would love to someday too. It's on the bucket list. <laughs> I mean, but Mike blew us away last week. He said Yob was still touring on credit cards in 2014. Like, so for the rest of the world, it's probably hard to wrap your head around a band if you love Yob that you think of as being so big and successful that like six years ago they were still paying for parts of their own tours themselves. <laughs> but that's just well, reality. If you think about, if you think about how. Um, over time gas prices have changed like I remember touring or somewhere in the Midwest in the 90s it was still like a dollar 40 or less per gallon so you know and then also I think as you get along in your career you can command more money for playing shows but it's still a, not that much money you know yeah <laughs> it's not like they're playing for thousands of ten thousand people every night or whatever yeah. You know? yeah only if only a few of our peers kind of from that generation have hit that level where they where it really is like a steady source of real in you know income that supports them and doesn't require them to work on in anything else bands that bands that listeners would think are all they do is play music they probably have day jobs unless you unless you know otherwise just assume they do i think yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, or they do 50 things in music that's kind of the that's the other model that works out exactly. is they're engineers producers they sell merch they dj they you know. yeah i i can't there's no way that i would want to be self-employed or whatever i don't want to have to think about managing myself oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> I know just like you know i don't need that much freedom <laughs> Maybe I do, but I I have to have some kind of structure, you know. I the self discipline thing would have to be probably worked on before I could be self employed. Yeah, I feel similar. I feel like I would have to be making enough money that I could hire like a reliable business manager to deal with all that <laughs> shit because I don't I don't think I I don't think I would be able to do do it very well. Mm, I mean, hard. shit. My wife just started um, doing some kind of contract work for a friend um charitable donation work and uh we're just trying to figure out how to file our taxes because they're just paying her and we have to figure out how to, does she have to pay quarterly on that on her income or can i just uh, bump she doesn't it? have like w-2s or anything no oh, she's not an employee she's just an independent she has to get a business license oh yeah, so just go to a tax person yeah. i did it i finally did it used an actual tax person and i just basically uploaded some shit and then they took care of it yeah, it was and awesome, and it was totally worth the money. Yeah, we probably will at at some point here. <sighs> it, it, it is fun. It is fun. She's been. Taxes, she's, yay! It's, no, yeah. it's not. It's not April. Ooh, let's it, talk more about that. It's not April yet. <laughs> no, it's really. It's really cool. We should just shift right into the government now. No, no, no. no. I'm just kidding. 
Let's no, talk about it all. It's a really cool thing, though, because she just happens <laughs> to ha have a friend who tripped over a massive pile of money in their work and decided they need to give it all away and just don't have the time or energy to figure out how to do it in a way that makes them happy. So they just hired her to help. So she's just helping find small charities around the country who need mostly right. focusing on, on, on diaper exchanges and places that give away diapers and feminine care products and stuff, because that's a huge hole, I guess, where there, there isn't a lot of help and it's a massive expense for people who don't have money. You know, in the first few years, you don't really calculate how fucking much money you spend on diapers. Oh, it's insane. It's insane. When you have a new baby, it's like hundreds of dollars a month easily. God, Just, that's crazy. Isn't mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't think about it. You know, people who have money or can afford diapers don't think like, oh, shit. Like, I better figure out my diaper situation. Like, I got to balance just... my checkbook to see if I can afford a pack of diapers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or, or the, I mean, the other thing that she's found out that I think is really fascinating is the feminine products because a lot of people don't have money or access to them. And so kids take off school and people don't go to work because they don't, they're not comfortable. And so that, that impacts your ability to learn, to get into college, to make money mm -hmm. just because you, you don't have access to pads and tampons and stuff. Like that's crazy. Well, I mean, menstrual cup. More yeah. people need to get into that. Or I got that, into yeah. that. Teach people how to use that. Whatever they're do, whatever they're doing to help these people out, I'm I'm all about. I just it, it had never occurred to me like what a barrier that could be for people to, to dive a little deeper into that. They'll basically yeah. pay whatever they're asking. <laughs> yeah, because you gotta have it, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you kind of speaking of like uh, doing charity work or helping? Uh, I think I ran across like you. Do you help raise feral kittens? You trap them and help oh, them get God. neutered? What, what is that? like? <laughs> so, so last summer, May, we bought a house and moved to um, outer southeast Portland or east Portland, east county. Um, and I moved into this house and started noticing cats around. And then I didn't realize how many cats there were. There were a lot of cats and lots of kittens and so i started trapping them um 29 adult cats and got Ooh. them fixed and then total for the whole summer up to july it was 22 kittens that um were that i'd snatched up and i would keep them basically i would keep them in a kennel in my office for a little bit and kind of assess them and get them you know, eating, because they were basically malnourished because when you have a colony of cats, it's um, it's really hard for the kittens to get enough food unless somebody's taking them aside and actually feeding the kittens separately. Yeah. But the adult cats will always win out. So anyway, these were like sick kittens that I was sort of cord keeping and coordinating seeing vets and medicating them and then trying to get them into rescue and foster situations. So oh, I had a lot of help from uh, a lady who does nothing but trap feral cats out here. And somebody mm. connected me with her and she, you know, lent me traps. And so the first night I think I trapped nine Damn. and then the next night it was six. And then, you know, and it gets harder and harder as more of them are fixed because the ones that are fixed want to go into the trap to get the bait, you know, and then yeah. it's like, you know. Damn you. <laughs> yeah. So these yeah. are, th these were all, in the yard of the house you bought or just in the vicinity the next door neighbor was feeding strays and mm. didn't want to get them fixed and so it was just ah. it, oh. maddening i'm just like you know there's a there's a free feral cat coalition of oregon will do it for free all you mm. have to do is make the effort to trap now that isn't the easiest thing in the world but it's not as hard as i thought it would be you know so anyway, it, it, it's interesting, the people that do this kind of thing, because, you know, she, uh, sometimes, it, it, I don't know, it was upsetting for her that I was doing this to the cats because they were going to be upset and mad or whatever. Oh. And I was, like, <laughs> I was just kind of like, if this cat could say, I want an abortion, it would, you know, yeah. like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. no that, doubt. Please don't, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. need to have eight kittens. Creating a colony of feral cats and not fixing them is not doing anybody any favors. Yeah. Well, Especially I mean, what the happens, cats. what these people do is they're like, well, they're not mine. Basically, they're not their cats until you start trying to fix the situation. And then suddenly you're fucking with my cats. It's just kind of oh. like, you ain't stopping me. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. 
that's what I told her. I was like, you're not going to be able to really stop me from, from trapping these cats. So there's two left, a male and a female that I need to catch before it starts over again. Oh, wow. So you're the second person I know who spent a, at least a decent chunk of the pandemic time dealing with stray animals. You probably know, do you know Paul Thomas? Paul runs sound at bottom of the hill. Um, no. and has, has for a long time. Well, nope. he was, he was, he's the best small venue sound person on planet earth, I think, and the nicest guy. And then I noticed watching his social feed, he didn't have any work. And so he just basically started a, a dog rescue. You know, he would just drive all over California and find do like, you know, big groups of dogs that didn't have any homes and house them temporarily and then find people that would, you know, find shelters or other places that could take him. And he turned it into like a, a legitimate nonprofit business where he was, I think, employing other out of work musicians and people from venues. Oh, that's that's genius, kind of. Yeah, I, I have a job though. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, oh, it's not trapping cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, if I yeah. so if I didn't have a job in a band, I would I would most likely try to join um, a network of trappers or try yeah. to create create or be a part of a network of trappers because. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's like fishing. You're like looking at your trap and you see the cat and you're like, go in. You know? <laughs> it's kind of weird. That's so bizarre. You catch I, them and they freak out. I, I yeah. saw, there was a post on one of the like local boards on Facebook for San Jose, people who live in downtown San Jose. And some dude was in downtown San Jose setting out traps, telling people he's from the city, but he wasn't. And he wasn't from around where they were. And he was like in a shirtless, a sleeveless shirt and like real mad and told the lady he was going to catch her fucking cats or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, people get pretty <laughs> pissed about, about it. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't love it that my yard is full of cat shit, Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm a decent person and I know they got a shit somewhere. Right. But there, are people, there are people who think it's okay to just like trap cats and then drive them out to the middle of nowhere and drop out them. The middle, yeah. Yeah. I assume yeah. he was doing, I mean, he, they, they posted pictures and video of him and he did not look like a, a nice person who cared about cats who wanted to help a feral cat problem. He yeah. I don't even want to think about what that dude was doing. Yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> they, stopped, like... they stopped him though and called the police on did him. Did they? Huh. Yeah, they did. But then there are there's I mean there's people like the uh, like the the cat the cat man of West Oakland, who that's I mean that's what he does like that's his full time gig he actually gets hired to go out and trap cats and then bring them in and get them neutered and um it's, he he was in some I I think like a Netflix documentary that my wife and I watched oh yeah uh, called Cat People oh it was actually really good uh, <laughs> I watched some some episode oh it's like Crazy Cat Lady or something something I watched that was just like it was actually kind of a bummer because these there people was, yeah like there a, was a few episodes that were like there was some lady that t just trained these cats and like had like a cat show she had a giant tour bus like she took her cats on tour <laughs> and did like shows that she would have to sell tickets for and she worked with promoters and it was like right. she was in like a cat band <laughs> that's weird i mean i might go to something like that yeah. you know <laughs> Uh, I don't think I don't think I would. All right, so we we can we can get, we can. <laughs> Should we keep talking about cats? I'd just be blind. <laughs> Who's your favorite cat band? <laughs> my I, my eyes would be swollen shut in five minutes. Um, so so getting getting back to the music discussion, what uh, how did you get started playing music? What what were like early influences? What, did you listen to a lot of music as a kid? Was there music in the house? I was in a talk radio house, so there was no music in my house. Yeah, I mean, my parents, I kind of grew up on, like, 80s country music. That's mm -hmm. what my parents listened to. Before that, when they were still partying, they listened to, like, 50s stuff, like, you know, Chuck Berry and stuff like that. Um, and then I only had radio, and I grew up really rural, so there was no college radio or anything like that. And we didn't even have a record store at first. Um where, so where, where was this? Granbury, Texas. Granbury, Texas. Huh. Hmm. I haven't even heard of it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible. It's like a horrible. <laughs> My graduating class was 50 people. Mm. Um, wow. So That's a small high school. Oh, God. And I'm still in the Facebook group for that town. And I can't. <laughs> 
it's 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 almost perverse how I like to watch them. But anyway, um, so you know, I spent a lot of time listening to cla- going between classic rock and like you know eighties vocoder R and B or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I had. You know, and then new wave happened, and I was pretty into that. And then and you know, and then I started getting interested also in like radio metal, like Night Ranger. Oh yeah. All that kind of stuff. And then what? Then I got, I went to college and started getting into sort of uh, 70s kraut rock, a lot of Mm. kraut rock and um, 70s, 60s and 70s, mostly 70s psychedelia. And then there was subarachnoid space that kind of started as a noise project, but ended up in this dark side of the psychic you know the neo psychedelia scene or yeah. whatever i don't know where did um, you go to college like when you escaped granberry how far did you get um i went to texas women's university and i oh, did not TWU. you yeah i went to t-dub <laughs> t-dub it, what's, was, what's... it was like it was the nadir of my life <laughs> it was a terrible, terrible time. That's in Denton, Texas, though. And there was cool shit about Denton for sure. Like, um, but I didn't want to be in college there. I didn't want to be in college at all. So I, you know, sort of took out my student loans and then I flunked and moved to San Francisco. My dad died. <laughs> and then I moved to San Francisco to be in a band, to start a band. I wanted to be in a band. So, and then met Mason Jones and ended up in subarachnoid space. Um, so My anyway, was around a long time. You, yeah, you guys were active for twelve or thirteen years. It was fifteen years. Fifteen years. Wow. wow. Yeah, I tried to reform it here when I got here, and we did do some stuff for sure. Did a tour, made a record, um, but I don't know. I just got to a point with it where I was kind of like, I wanted to do yeah. something else. I just wanted to do something different. Um, so. But yeah, like, I don't know. I really like a lot of the black metal. I'm I'm into, um, as far as doom goes, I think the first like extreme doom that I got interested in was Con 8. Because I, like, we we played with them and I I watched that and I was like, I've never seen anyone groove that slow. Like (laughs) Slow groove. Yeah. You know, that drummer and... You know, I don't know. It was, it was, and it's extreme. And so that's kind of what I thought, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody likes Black Sabbath and, you know, no one can really dispute that. And, but I like the more extreme stuff. I'm mm-hmm. more moved by something more extreme, anything more extreme. What, what, what were some of the so extreme? What was the like your crew of bands in the Bay Area that you were that you played shows with and were around a lot at you know through um, the through the history of of the band? Yeah, so oh, right. Were there a couple of good pals that that? Yeah, we we started out kind of on a noise scene and warehouses and stuff, and then as we became kind of more whatever we, be, we were becoming. We made friends with a lot of the Japanese bands like Acid Mother's Temple mm. um, and some other ones that would come, they would come to the US and we exchanged shows, we went to Japan. So we played a lot with um, Japanese bands and other bands that sort of revolved around that scene if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. And then like we started kind of like moving into um, sort of the metal scene, which I always thought was really strange, but for, I think maybe it was because of our association with relapse, but um, we kind of started moving into that realm and we played shows with Ludacra and like, I don't know, else, lots of bands. I can't even remember. I, I, I must have played a hunt, like more than a hunt. I don't know how many shows I played with that band, but I can't really remember. <laughs> a lot of it <laughs> were you were you yep. in san francisco in the noise scene early enough to to be around like grotus and those that they're sort of contemporaries they were done by like 96 i do remember hearing hearing that name um who else did we play with or, like uh scott generic 
Gotcha. Yeah, and that was that was when Buzz was even still in San Francisco because he was palling around with the Grotus the Grotus folks a lot. Yeah, I was over at at their house once. I, you know, it's it's kind of crazy the way San Francisco was. The way you could just end up at like Gail Kroger's house or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Or just at a flat somewhere. Our guitar player Carl had one of those flats. One of the, and... one of the roommates is like, you know, one of the roommates is like somebody famous, and you're just like, that's crazy. You know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and there's you know there's like a full band set up in one corner and like a grubby kitchen and you know maybe like tapestries hanging over a few of the windows. Those those spaces were so cool. I kind of got in the yeah. end, so I didn't get to see a lot of them, but but uh, the ones that I did get. Did you to ever see, see the Hickey Hotel? No, I didn't. The Hickey Hotel. I know of it. That, that place. It. That might be better. It might be better that you didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because that was like early high school for me so by the time i got to college it oh. was like it was like the weird places in berkeley it was barrington and cloyne and the like the co-ops in berkeley that were running shows in in the basements or in the kitchens that that i you know first started regularly going to underground shows good job Sting. yeah yeah <laughs> i remember when people could afford People could like have shows in their houses back then. It's crazy. I know it was weird. Yeah when, you, yeah, when your house was the size of a you know, hundred or two hundred person capacity club. Yep, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, it was a it was a weird time. People who like people who came to San Francisco post you know dot com boom and beyond probably can't even conceive of what it what that what it was like then because it was so different. <laughs> Those I mean, flats people were already. Divided up. People were already complaining in like 1995 or six when i got there that it's over man it's there. But, but it wasn't it wasn't over yet it, it now it seems like it's over but i mean everybody says that right like so i i and what kind of underground party sort of thing goes on now but yeah, it's got to be still happening on some level. It, it probably is. like it's just, probably like I, tech guys doing like electronic. <laughs> yeah, they're just throwing raves. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of kids running like like hardcore and grind and death shows in industrial parks and abandoned spaces and people's houses. Mm -hmm. That that's kind of like the the young scene right now. That's fun. Yeah. It's that's fun. Cool. Oh, and once one scene is over another one pops up to yeah. sort of respond to whatever the current state of is happening in, in yeah. that locale. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You get, to, you get to a point in San Francisco though, where they're just, there can't really be a scene like that outside of the like sanctioned clubs because this, nobody owns any of the property anymore and is allowing it. All the property has been bought up by big companies or foreign nationals. There's a lot of stuff just empty. You know, property that's just owned and mm -hmm. they're not doing anything with it. It just sits empty and no, and nothing happens. Those would have been flats in the past, and people, there would have been stuff going on. Now it's just ghost town. So San Francisco's weird right now, for sure. It's very weird. I agree. Yeah, that place kind of broke my heart, but yeah, to leave it. but it's okay. I mean, I, I have a, I, I like my life now, so yeah. you know, it's fine. And I just spent my whole life in the South Bay in San Jose being shit on by everybody in cool places like San Francisco and Oakland. <laughs> you no, know, I think uh, I think Ross is from the Hose. Yeah, I think so. We had we had our moment. The Rock Gardens was a popping rehearsal space that had a lot of good bands in it at one point in time, and people would just come and hang out to watch and see what was going on. South First was cool. Marsugi's was a good dive bar that had lots of good shows, and the Cactus Club had everything you could ever want. You know, so there there was stuff happening here, but it was not San Francisco or Oakland level at all. Yeah, at Our, one point I remember being like, just like so many good bands, you know, around that were playing like Lucifer's Hammer and some of the, you know, like it, like it was just kind of amazing the 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 scene that I found myself hanging out in yeah I was, pretty, I was pretty stoked on it you know and it was interesting to come here and then um have it be different and sort of people not really working as hard as they did in the bay 
to be able to do the things that they're doing kind of like um at that time in portland it seemed like there was no expectation i don't know i don't know how to describe it exactly like, but more like hobbyist nothing, yeah kind of like nothing ever happens anyway fuck it kind of like yeah. deal gotcha Something, you know or like mm -hmm. i don't know it's, it was weird because i was pretty dedicated in san francisco and i like to practice and 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 whatnot and then he coming here it's just a different a little bit more of a different laid back thing but i think that's changing it's weird i think maybe more the more expensive it gets to live somewhere the harder you have to work to do the things that you want to do and then oh, yeah. you, you make sure that you do those things or else paying all that fucking money to live somewhere isn't worth it you know so yeah i i bet it's yeah. that and i bet it's also i mean at the time, no one thought of Portland as a place where anyone was going to go to discover new bands, where there was where there was an, enough of like a mass of talent and artists to to make a scene interesting. We saw what happened in Seattle, and obviously the Bay Area has always been rich, but it's really I think in the last ten years that Portland has become kind of like a hub of heavy music, generally speaking, and I bet that brings the level of what everybody's doing up a bit because they know that people have their eyes on Portland. Well, it's interesting, you know, watching that happen too. Cause like also everybody's talking about Portland because you know, it's little Beirut and like, <laughs> no, and like, so you got, the, you got the weirdos on the, you know, being like fucking Portland's nothing but a burned out shithole full of anarchists yeah. or whatever. And so Portland just seems to be like, for various reasons, not just a music scene, it seems to be on people's minds, which I think is interesting. I'm like, I'm just kind of like, sometimes with that stuff, I'm just kind of like, why don't you mind your own business, Delaware? You I know. know? <laughs> oh, I had to talk down my my um, father-in-law because we were going to Portland to visit to go on college tours last spring, and he's like, "You're oh, gonna die! Take a gun!" He's like, "Be careful!" And I was like, "I've fucking been there before. It's like four blocks. It's down. Nobody hangs out there, anyways. Like this isn't that's go to Portland. It's gigantic in that in I mean, that I was, area." I was pretty blown away at, at the, the image that people have and, and the the way the media has made it out. It's just ah, uh, the media. I yeah. know. <laughs> the but, media. Uh, we know it was only one media that was making it out that way, <laughs> but, but Portland man, has gone to hell. But all man, of it. man, were they adamant about it? And man, was it clear that they had either either never been or were just lying on purpose? Because it was fine. a bit of both. Yeah, I'm, su I'm sure. <laughs> People do like to talk about how dangerous it is, and you know, I don't know. I live out in a neighborhood where you know there have been more shootings than there were last year, or whatever, and lot you know there's a homeless camp a couple blocks from me um but i mean i i kind of see that all over the city that's so, urban that's urban life go to austin yeah um, probably eight homeless camps all within a mile of us yeah oh, <laughs> there are In wealthy silicon valley me, it's really interesting to me how people are like the west coast man they got a fucking problem with all that and i'm like hey, do you understand the climate here on the west coast it's yeah. nice. It's a nice. lot easier to be homeless here than like Chicago, you yeah. know. Exactly. So, I, mean, I don't know. Well, we've we've heard about like states, other states around us, basically orchestrating to ship people in here to to solve Nevada, solving their homeless problem by like paying people and putting them on a bus to San Francisco. Yep. Shit of fools. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's what they. That's what they used to do with crazy people. Put them on a boat and send them to a different port. Yep. Yeah, uh, uh, I enjoy Portland's lawless history and its current state of lawlessness. And I, lawlessness. And I think, like, I don't know. I think a little bit of anarchy is good for everybody. <laughs> There's a little part of me that's happy whenever I hear somebody with one of those super loud mufflers like calling ass, or like it. You know, it sounds like gunshots. There's part of me that's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know that there's any place in this country where the sort of the if you believe that there are two sides or whatever i think that's too obvious of a story to tell but where there the two sides are more obviously distinct but also right near each other than portland because you just don't have to drive very far outside of portland to be in the the free state of jefferson you know in in the in the fucking crackpot land it's true that's where i live 
I live in that outside area right before uh, Grub. The outside lands. <laughs> yeah. Outlander. The outer rim. <laughs> <laughs> you'll show. You'll you'll give them what for out there. The outer rim. I totally pictured a toilet. <laughs> oh, I just I just oh, no, have Star. Okay. Yeah, you say outer rim. I think Star Wars. Yeah. Because you know I was born in 1973, <laughs> so I'm just the perfect age to think that. But damn. All right. All right. So should we listen to some music? Is um, it, uh, I want to talk about cats more. Okay. Should we do that sure. instead? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Cat talk. Oh my god, it's so bad. Sometimes, like, I can end up talking way too much about it. Way too. Much. <laughs> no, I love cat. I, we have four cats, so <laughs> this is a this is a cat house. A cat house. It's not a cat house. It's a house full of cats. <laughs> well, you know, pe- people light up when they talk about things that they're excited about. Mm-hmm. And why would you ever? Why would you ever not want to hear people talk about what they're excited about? Maybe, actually, uh, I'll, I'll. Sometimes I don't want to hear about it. I, but rescue... some people get excited about celebrities' feet. I don't want to hear them talk about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I might listen a little bit, you know. Know. just to see what they have to say, to see what the hey. to see what the draw is. Yeah. Don't yeah. sh- don't shame my kink or what's the fr- there's a saying sorry I was just looking at a map don't of, stink my kink of Gran- of Granbury Texas so wow yeah that's the middle of fucking nowhere it's I mean you worst. could I you mean, could you be know, more it's... than the middle of nowhere in Texas without a doubt but when I zoom in and the first thing that steps pops out is the pecan plantation is that how you say it if you're in Texas yeah that's where the the country rich people are which aren't uh, really rich ooh. oh they're just country rich although that that river looks pretty awesome. Looks like yeah, great it's like for a water sports. Bubble. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Feet, water sports. <laughs> water sports. <laughs> I love taking what, us down a hole. I love what passes for a lake in Texas. That's a fucking yeah, river. I mean, it's the widening of the Brazos River, which yeah, is a exactly. very slow move. It's a slow moving, muddy, warm <laughs> lake that, like, is you know, it's like it's like it's, you can't see through the water, you know. <laughs> It's just a muddy bottom, you know. Yeah, it's like you you want to take everyone from there to one of those beautiful rivers, like in the deep emerald forest jungles of Oregon, and go. This is a river. <laughs> that that thing you live next to, that's no river. That mud bog. <laughs> yeah, it's totally like a mud puddle. And also, like I don't know, I just remember jumping off a dock into the water as a kid and sinking up to my almost to my knees in soft mud at the bottom. Oh. Just being like, ah! oh, that's so <laughs> gross. It's like oh. quicksand. We we drove across the country when I was in fourth grade, and you know I had studied American geography. I had learned <laughs> about the mighty Mississippi. We pulled up to the Mississippi River for the first time, and I was so disappointed. It's like, what is this mud filled pile of shit? Oh, this like, is it. Like I can go to Lake Tahoe on the weekends. Why am I at? <laughs> why, why am I at this river? <laughs> Lake Tahoe, where the water glitters. <laughs> well, no, the, the clearest lake on earth, or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's it's really, it's really amazing. I, I, I think I only went there once. I took acid at Lake Tahoe. There you Ooh. go. Yeah, that's a proper place to do it. That's the place to do it. All right. So music, music, music. We had some good. Su- well, I don't know if we had good submissions this week. We always get PR submissions like I we joked because they submitted your band as if we had never heard you. And that's happened a few times with bands that we already know. Yeah. But we got a bunch of I, I love more when we get submissions directly from the bands and the band members themselves. And we have a bunch of those this week. So Ooh. that's always fun for me. Nice. Because wow. they're they're going to listen and wait and we're going to probably be nice. Who knows? We'll see. And we'll see. I mean, only if they're amazingly brilliant yes of course all right so what do we have today share my screen here so you can see what we're listening to the first thing that we have to listen to so i don't know if you've listened to it yet you probably haven't listened to it yet but um mike last week suggested this band cryptic brood from uh we're not going to listen to them but they're amazing we're not and you should you should definitely Mm -hmm. check them out later because they're writing these complex like arrangements, crazy time and tempo changes, all like played together live as a band. So, you know, when a band like slows down and speeds up all together and changes tempos on a dime. Oh, I love that stuff. Right. And Me it's too. so it's so hard to do. So yeah. all right, so 
our first submission today is from a band called The Brutal Art of Stabbing. Oh. I think about that a lot, too, because I got him a pocket, I got him his first pocket knife. Probably cut, not your first. I cut myself. Oh, shit. I finally did it. I finally cut myself. <laughs> I, I find myself thinking about, like, what if I, like, somebody jumped me, would I be able to open this thing up and shove it into them? Like if oh, I if I really, if I really did fear because that's like a really crazy intimate thing to do. I understand why. <laughs> like, what are you talking about here? Well, no, like <laughs> I know, right? Pe- like Jeff sh- wants to stab people. Like no, being a <laughs> being a sniper up on a road is so like divorced from. Yeah, yeah. Like you could easily think of it like a video game or something, and you don't you don't like take the bullet and shove it into them. You do something and some amount of time later, something happens Yeah, and you go, Oh, I guess that happened. But you got to like have intent. If you're going to like, <sighs> I don't even know if I, I can mean, do it. it. Freaks me I out. Feel like if somebody's trying to kill you and you're, you're in that moment where you're afraid you're going to lose your life. I think you can do it. I'm I think pretty I sure. Could. Oh yeah. I'm and, sure fight or flight. And if I was gonna, if I was gonna starve to death, I would definitely eat a human being that died before me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think if I was gonna die, I, so this has come up a whole bunch recently. Yeah, but mostly because I listened. There's dying a, or eating people. Eating people or both. I re-listened to the episode of Armchair and Dangerous about cannibalism. Oh, it's a great, great podcast with this like conspiracy and dark. There's a show on Netflix called Dark Tourist. This mm-hmm. guy, David Ferrier, who's a journalist, and he's, like, interested in all these, like, weird tourist things that people do, like going to Chernobyl and, you know, he did a whole episode on, those. yeah, he did a whole episode of the podcast on cannibalism, mm-hmm. including interviewing a guy in France who was arrested for killing someone, but also ate some people, and he, like, there were excerpts of the interview on the podcast, and it was chilling, because the guy is, like, charming and interesting, and he's out of jail now. He leads catacomb tours in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's just like casually talking about how when he was a morgue operator and he would take pieces of people and eat them. <laughs> it was just like, wow. yeah, it's crazy. So I mean, all... that, that kind of shit is pretty, pretty morbid. It's pretty interesting too. It's just sort of like, like I, for the Donner party story, I, I love it. Mm. Oh it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's terrific. But it's just a really interesting story. And I think it's also like, a shame that people that came that lived through it because they ate dead bodies were like treated like they did something wrong. Ostracized. Sort of like, yeah. Oh, fuck you for surviving. We we had a ti- <laughs> we had a tiny little hut about fifteen minutes from the Donner Party Museum. Growing up, we had a little cabin out in the out in the woods on a dirt road. I probably went to that museum and sat through the little documentary movie they play for you like 50 times in my <laughs> life. I know that I know that story so well. It's a cool museum. So good. Yeah. And this is all thanks to this band whose name is The Brutal Art of Stabbing. I didn't come yes. up with this yeah. out of nowhere. It's fucking he suggested it. So, all right. So yeah. this song is called Oh, he wanted us to listen to Thieves Forest. This is a three-song EP. Okay. So, turn up the volume so we'll hear it. We don't even, there's no clue as to what we're even going to get with this. No, I don't, I don't get a feeling from looking at the album art or from looking at like the band logo. I don't, sometimes you feel like you can get a sense for Mm -hmm. what you're about to hear. I don't know. So let's find out. All right. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Hell yeah. And I'm all out of bubble gum. I feel like it's just about to do something. There we go. Well, if we just 
paid attention to their description right here. It says brutal, heavy beats and noise. That describes it. <laughs> there we go. I was. Like, I couldn't tell if my if my so levels were turned was... up too high. Sorry, what were you saying, Melinda? <laughs> Maybe it was their level. Yeah, I think it was their level. I'm yeah, like... for... <laughs> they were definitely doing some game staging on that situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I I kept thinking that I was losing connectivity. Yeah, you, you might have uh, been. No. <laughs> probably was a little bit but then also I, I, it made me think about when you record with a four track and you don't have a drum kit so you like use your fingernail on like a cassette tape or something yeah <laughs> like a cassette tape case or whatever yeah whatever, <laughs> whatever you can get hey yeah. you know it's better than being out there in the streets being doing drugs so yeah. no this is uh this this reminds me of like some of that sort of grimy or filthier sort of industrial that I ran yeah. across back in like the nineties definitely underground feels, industrial like, kind of primitive feel. Yeah. 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 I'm going to shoot a little bit. I'm going to shoot like halfway into the song and see if we, if it goes anywhere different. Yeah, his meters are all yellow and red. From for yeah, for me it's like I I couldn't listen to it the way it is. Yeah, yeah. Like I couldn't sit down and listen to this entire EP the way it is. It's just like it's it's and I'm sure it was intentional. Yeah. But like just the fact that it it I feel like I need to reach up and turn down my like I'm like, "Oh, I got this thing maxed out. Like it's too loud. It's too noisy." No. I mean, I was That's... looking at my Bluetooth speaker kind of like... Are we okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, also, keep in mind we're over Zoom here, and we're, we're not going to get on this call the the very best quality. When the episode yeah. comes out, the audio that's recorded will be good. And I'll have to listen yeah. to it again outside of yeah, no, yeah. yeah Zoom. Well, to me, it sounds like this. Th I could be playing a video game. And this could be what's playing in the background. You like go into a nightclub and you're trying to like hunt down the the gang leader that you're supposed to kill in the nightclub. And there's like chaos all around you. Yeah, yeah. This is like too loud. It's like kind of anxiety inducing. Oh, yeah. like, it sounds like soundtrack music. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Could definitely use it that way for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, and probably everything we're saying is he's going to listen to this episode and go exactly yep. Yep. yes yes exactly <laughs> sounds good <laughs> that was my intention <laughs> all right so here we go i really wish my connection was better yeah i know well, li listen back and then you can like amend your comments <laughs> you go, yeah <laughs> actually no that sounded amazing no it didn't sound bad it just it sounded exactly the way he described it. i think that's exactly the intention yeah all right so up next is a band whose name I don't know how to say. T V L P A. Tulpa. Tulpa. I don't know. So we're doing the. This is a referral through who? Considering they're from Richmond, Virginia. Any guess? Yes. Yes. Friends of Dumbwaiter. So we came across this amazing band called Dumbwaiter last year. We love them. They were guests a couple of weeks ago, and these are some friends of theirs that oh, nice. submitted music. Cool. So let's hear. Let's hear. Well, it. Let's have another Dumbwaiter experience. I would love it. This song is called "The Water."
I like that. I'm way into it. Were you breaking that, up? Or uh, could you hear rhythmic it? Part. I could hear it. That okay, good. That uh, rhythmic part. That rhythmic part made me think of uh, Scratch Acid. Oh yeah. They have a song know. called Cannibal. I do not know. <laughs> I do not know Scratch Acid. Speaking of cannibals, though. Yeah, speaking of cannibals. Um, Scratch I, Acid or Jesus Lizard. Ah, uh, gotcha. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this kind of genre bendy stuff. There was like ambient. There was, tr you know, kind of s had some of the like ambience of black metal. It wasn't black metal at all. And then it's like got some kind of grungy, post grungy, weird, angular, rhythmic stuff. And then the hardcore screaming. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of hardcore vocals I like. I like there was some that. dissonance too. Yeah. It's like it's like noise core a little bit more. It's not it's not like just a straight up like yelling toneless yeah, yelling it's it's got a little yeah 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 it's, yeah, it's got some... i like it a lot i'm i'm this is the only song that's out right now yes wow this is the only song that this group whoever this group of friends in in richmond virginia that's making music like yeah. keep hanging out with each other seriously and keep making music because you guys have a cool scene developing yeah and, and it's exciting especially in a place like richmond well, this song is only two minutes long why don't we listen to the rest sure all right that a lot really that ending is just is pretty crushing yeah, yeah it was great they got their tags down it Alternative. Also, it, it, <laughs> it's got this crushing thing going on but it also makes me think about like beer soaked crowded show yeah like, mm -hmm. it wasn't not fun it also it, it also had like a kind of a fun wild element to it that i liked Cha chaotic hardcore is one of their tags see that there you go <laughs> And I really like I thank you for not disappointing us, Tulpa, because yeah. I was gonna feel really bad if some friends of Dumbwaiter yeah. sent us some music and it was horrible. <laughs> so so here's what caught my fucking attention is they had to they had to call out multiple people for providing hand claps. Ooh, is that some five song. hand claps or is that on song five? Song five, I assume. Oh. Song <laughs> I need to hear the, the hand clap song. <laughs> no, come on, JD, cl clap in five. We're, we're working on JD's understanding of other time signatures. I don't know. <laughs> Do you just clap five times and then pause? <laughs> no, you don't pause. Well, if you pause, that makes it six. Then it makes it six. <laughs> you just clap harder on the one every time. Oh, okay. Is that it? Okay. Um, yeah, this is really cool. Nice work. Looks like they have another release, too, from 2019. All right, digital album added to my cart. Do they have merch? Let's see. I love looking at band merch. Ooh, look at this handsome devil. Ooh. I that's can't, cool. I can't do a white shirt. I think that's a snake. Oh, dude, yeah. is that like the bass player modeling their shirt? That's I rad. think I think so. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. I mean, oh, I don't yeah. know if it's... Look at that. I don't know if it's a bass player, but is... he seems kind of bass player-like. All right, so this is... Although I do like that he has, the, uh, he has those lenses that change colors in the sun yeah. and indoors okay. and outdoors. <laughs> this is a game we like to play. So you can see totally the three broken. band members on, on the header of their band camp mm. page. Mm -hmm. From left to right, tell me what instruments you think who plays. Oh. Melinda first. I think bass, bass is... I think that's the right call for left side. Singer, guitars, middle... Drummer, right? Yeah. The well, drummer always looks unenthused, even though it's the most physically demanding shit in the band. <laughs> yeah. They have to conserve their energy. Yes, they so do. They can't, like, you know. They're, they're total freaks. <laughs> 
they, they are, but they're so important. Is and the 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 good ones are so valuable. They're like. But you can't let them know that all the time. Yeah. You, you got to like, like I'm not all for You got to make them think that they're a dime a dozen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not for the whole men's rights concept in general, but I think it's reasonable to use it to, to neg your drummer occasionally just to keep things in line. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. All right. Um, wow, that was really good. That was That's really, a good way to start. That was fantastic. Good all job. Right. I'm going to, I might have to get that shirt too. I can wear white oh, shirts. You can wear white shirts? Yeah. I, I got, I, I got not, yeah. lifetime fat guy white shirt issues. It's just, it's just. Yeah, it I might, can't do it either. That's, well, I like might not be able to actually pull them off, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. For a while, for a while, eight bells would wear white, and it, but it was all, I'd always see pictures and be like, oh god, you know. <laughs> but it was, it was this thing that I had where I was like, I don't care how I look, I'm gonna just look weird or like you know. Or something. I don't know. I had this sort of fixation with it, where I was like, "Nobody wears white. I'm going to wear white, or whatever." I don't know. Well, but now it's kind of. I feel a thing. more comfortable now. Especially these like these like Scandinavian bands that are digging back into like folk music, like Mirkur, and they're always in white. And it, it, it looks like what's that fucking movie? That Ari Aster movie that the white people were the horror movie. <laughs> Are you talking about the the uh, where they go to the oh. the cult commune and yeah, what the fuck is it called? Yeah. Um, that that's like what every band looks like now. <laughs> that's true. Um, Everybody wants to look like they're in a weird cult. Yeah, I mean we've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Dressing, <laughs> I, self-identifying as members of this weird cult, so that we can wave each other, wave at each other in the streets, and know that we might be friends. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look, there's a band shirt. I can't. I can't read the name of the band. That guy. I know. I, that guy's good. Right <laughs> we'll there. be friends. Yep. <laughs> no, right. They're not. You just know that they're not. Probably not going to be mean to you. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's a Pantera shirt. Oh yeah. Well, uh, but like, you can read the logo. You can read Pantera. True. <laughs> or, but then the ones you can't read, you're always got to worry. You got some like national. You know, yeah, black, true. nationalist black that metal or some some other fucking fringe shit where you have to pay attention. That is true. It's too hard to yeah. figure out. I so, don't know. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I just no. can't. You got any records to show off? Did you buy anything? Oh, you're at that point already? We are at that point. Holy shit, bro. Yeah, I, I did. I have. I just yep. got that. Yes, let's see it. Let's see. The movie was Midsommar, by Midsommar. the way. Midsommar. There we go. Yeah, Midsommar. Ooh, this is, oh, that's the new author and Punisher. Yeah, I got it. I got oh. it. Damn. I haven't listened to it yet. I just got I, it yesterday. I love how like the aesthetic and the music is heavy and scary, but then every time I see like the album title and the song titles, they're always fucking funny. <laughs> like, what's the ti- what's the title of that record? It's something funny, if I remember correctly. Oh God! It's uh, Crawler. Crawler. Yeah, Crawler. Like, Crawler. But, like Motley yeah. Crue. Cruller, <laughs> like a donut. Yeah. It's a honey well, crawler. I heard a single. I heard since I think it was maybe the first single. I don't remember the name of it actually, but I listened to it online and was like, I was totally blown away by how kind of beautiful it was. It's mm-hmm. different. It's different than previous stuff, and which I also like. And he's bringing a guitar player on board now for live shows. I read. Yeah. I mean, the singing in it was like was really like kind of made me want to cry. I don't oh, know wow. what. Yeah, I mean, but I've been feeling like kind of on the edge of always crying anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, you know, I can I'm always about camp to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. Watch like a dog food commercial and start crying. Oh God, I can't. Just... I can't watch anything. Oh man, did you oh, just so... get that like today or yesterday? I got it yesterday. Yeah. Okay, I, I was going to say, like, it doesn't it. even come out until I, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, right when I heard that single, I, I ordered it because I was just like, wow, that really, I felt really moved by that yeah. single. Yeah. So, some other things, that I got some Dark Buddha Rising. Oh, I don't know them. Dark Buddha. Oh, wow. Dark Buddha Rising. Like Oranzi Pazuzu Associated. Oh, at- oh okay. Nice. Love me, Aransi Pazuzu. It's, it's really weird. This stuff is really like sort of minimalist, really minimalist doom that is like 
I find it, I mean, I kind of like, I'm kind of a fan of minimalist hypnotic kind of stuff. And that, mm. so that kind of scratches that itch. And then just other stuff that I've gotten fairly recently. Slave. Where they got, yeah, it's all, they've gotten all cosmic. <laughs> like, suddenly they're like cosmic psychedelic warlords. All right. Yeah. And then what else? Oh, um, I don't know if you guys have heard this. Ludium uh -oh. Prophecy Band from your area. Um, oh, what are they called again? Illudium. Illudium. I don't know yeah. if I'm saying it. I don't know if I'm saying it right. But it's a prophecy band, and it, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. I would recommend it. Um, it's Elements another one of those things that I I read and all right. I, I just oh, yeah. it, I found it really touching. I don't know. Will mm. Will like this? Re did you read the de the description yet, JD? No. It's like got you written all over it. Does it? Mel elements of doom, post metal with shoegaze and atmospheric rock. Sounds great to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it reminds me of like of of the '90s, but mm. a, a lot of stuff that people younger than me are doing reminds me of the '90s. It's so. back. It's Music back. musically, it's back. We I mean, yep. in, in seventy plus episodes, we've listened to like close to three hundred bands and. There are so many bands that are pulling direct influence from, not from the obvious '90s music, but from some of the like the next level down bands that weren't necessarily on the radio around the world, and uh, and it's it shows a lot. And and we've talked about them probably on almost every episode, but the reemergence of Hum and that new record that came out last year is sort of I think indicative of the moment that everybody was in and kind of what they went back to and listened to from the '90s mm -hmm. in, in order to make this new music that young young folks are making which makes me happy young folks yeah i'm gonna have yeah. to find i'm gonna have to listen to this i'm gonna have to dig into this you should listen it's funny. to it yeah Definitely. they describe it as uh well they say that her influences are smashing pumpkins isis kate bush and the cocteau twins i'm in so you're like <laughs> I mean, all that's, the way if that's sold. what influenced that album i'm gonna be in <laughs> jeez yeah i think you'll like it i, th nice. I think uh, All right. I, I, wrote, I wrote to her because I was like, oh, the, like, I don't know. When I listened to the single, it felt like what I needed at that moment. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty good. And, and you said she's from the Bay Area? Um, ish. I, yeah, ish. I can't quite remember. Yeah, it just says California. Arcade, maybe like Northern California. Oh, like Ar Ar Eureka, Arcata. I can't quite remember. I really can't remember. I shouldn't say. Hmm. Then I'll be making up, you know, making shit up. I did, I did that once. <laughs> yeah. About it. Like, you know, like you just talk and make it up as you go along. She grew up in. I don't, she grew. Yo. She grew up in the verdant redwoods, so we can sort of uh, the verdant. We can redwoods. we can narrow that down to a few places. And if you if you said if Arcada popped into your head, I mm -hmm. bet I bet that's probably in the ballpark. So yeah. Isn't that where Mr. Bungle was from? Uh, even farther mm -hmm. north, but they were. Yeah, they were from the, the the deep deep north. The deep deep north. All right. So what do I have? What did what do you have? This was a band that was re, that was played for us. We did an end of the year episode with our buddy John Carbone, who's in oh, a band yeah. called Moontooth. And this was these are friends of his that he played called Witch Fist. And we really liked this record. And I ordered two copies. Aww. And so there's one for you. Thank and they you, must sir. have figured out who we were. Oh, really? Because they sent us a bunch of other shit too. Oh yeah. T-shirts, two T-shirts for you. What? Yeah, a white one even. Dude, we're big time now. I'm jealous that you got this one. <laughs> oh shit! Two shirts for me. Thanks, Witch Fist. And this one will be tie-dyed. Are you gonna wear that white? No, we. Whenever I get a white band shirt, my daughter that's in college loves band shirts, but we always tie-dye them for her. So we got a couple of white shirts we need to. My younger Ooh, daughter and I are gonna tie-dye idea. and then send them send them up to her. That's a great idea. That's, I mean, it's a cool shirt, and it's the. I think it's the same print, but you have a multicolor version of it. Oh, is that it? Oh, wow, yeah. that's so, cool. So thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. We're always happy to. Thanks, get Witch Fist. Free shirts. I'm happy to pay for shirts, honestly. Oh, of course. And then, should I, should I, do you have stuff, or should I, I break do, out the big boy? You can if you want. Or here, you get yours, and then. Okay, I, so I'm I'm going. Uh, I got these actually for Christmas, but I haven't shared them yet. So oh. one is the the Dogma 
album that came out um once again this is sort of like a really heavy sort of i don't want to they're not shoegaze but like how would you describe dogma i mean it's it's they have shoegaze elements it's definitely like post rock really heavy once again violins yeah there's they have a violin player like you know a couple different singers they're great we had them on um they're abuse abuse a blues funeral band um and this album was so good i'm yeah. so glad that jad sort of steered us towards them because yeah. i had actually not heard of them even though they're a local band yeah um, and they're incredible i mean it reminds me a little bit of like spotlights or you know yeah you know, a little there, bit a little a, heavier and slower but yeah have you have you listened to that band spotlights no i feel like given what you've said so far you might enjoy them they're um they're on ipecac somehow they managed oh. to land on Patton's label and they're just a trio you might know Chris Enriquez, their drummer. He's a uh, he's very embedded in mostly hardcore Everything. though. His past was hardcore, but he works for the company that owns Revolver and the Hard Times and all those media properties. So a lot of a lot of folks in bands know him just because he deals with them for magazine shit. Sounds pretty familiar, but I don't I don't know. But he's know. a New York New York City guy. Yeah. And then I got this other blues funeral band who I picked up. Uh, it's called Lord Buffalo. Um, super good band. Like they remind me of like this weird sort of heavier cross between like Woven Hand and all them witches. Uh, little elements of King Buffalo in there, but but really good. Just like heavy sort of alt alt country metal, <laughs> alt country metal. <laughs> alt country really metal. good. Alt country <laughs> metal. Ooh, I just made a new genre. Yeah, we're ready for your right. big thing. This is gear day for me. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is the part where I go to the bathroom. No, you don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we're talking pedals. I, <laughs> look, I did that. Look how ridiculous this is. Shh. Like... <laughs> I did that thing last night that every guitar player, bass player loves but also hates to do, which is you rebuild your board. Ooh. So that's... Uh. <laughs> New board. This is where you watch on YouTube. Yes, watch I've this on YouTube. I've been putting your... it off. Really? Mine was a mess. I had been using a Temple audio yeah. board. I decided I hated them, and I was going to go back to something that I could throw in a road case and had Velcro and could top mount everything. And there's no new pedals on here. I have a new pedal coming. But it is a new board, so that's exciting. And this yeah, is the... I have the one of those. That's a Etalokak. Etalokak? What are you talking about? The brown thing at the top there. Uh, chocolate. Oh. The the company that makes the power supply is called Jocks, and that's this is their because it looks like a big chocolate bar. Oh. Are you it's able the, to? Are you able to? Are you powering all your pedals off that? Yep. Independent. Separate inputs. Yeah, and tons of flexibility. This was when I finally was like, I'm done not having what I need for whatever weird pedals I have on my board. I need a power supply that has everything. In this power yeah, so you, so you you have like a, an oddball pedal that takes ten volts or whatever. Yep, and it, and you, it's got dip switches, so some of the inputs are switchable to support different different wattages, different voltages. So ah. yeah, it's it's real flexible. It's it was a great I, investment. I want that. How much yeah. was that? I I don't remember. Uh, like three hundred bucks maybe. Uh. I'm say. I know. It's so hard to spend 300 bucks on something that seems on power. <laughs> I know it's so boring, but <laughs> it made my life it made my life easier. But, but hey, if you're a serious touring band member, oh, wait. No, I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's mean. That's, no, that was, that's not what I meant. That's cold that blood across the wrong what? way. I'm hurt. What I mean, if you make your living touring, <laughs> Then you invest three hundred dollars in something that helps you on tour. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, this isn't even on tour. This is just <laughs> when you buy never have. Seems yeah. like you never have to fuck with it. You just set it up and it's done. And then if you have to change it, it's easy to change because you don't have a daisy chains. And... Yep. A hundred percent. I need something like that. Mine doesn't even power all of my pedals. Like I have a wall wart now, and then and also I have. Like uh, I cut up a daisy chain so I could daisy chain a couple because I didn't have I don't have enough ends you know yeah so uh, highly recommended it's like you'll forget about it 
you know, skip whatever, whatever extra spending thing you do, your Starbucks or your whatever for a while and just put that in a little pot and then go buy your, your power supply guilt free. But I do have a new pedal coming. It was supposed to be here today and I'm very excited about it. MXR just released a new pedal and everybody's finally getting them and putting on, putting out little demo videos. It's called the blue octave something or another. And it is a little MXR stomp box. So like the same size as my envelope filter. That is two octaves up, two octaves down, fuzz, and a phaser all in one box. And it sounds absolutely incredible. I don't know. I, I don't know why I feel so skeptical about that. <laughs> I, I would too, but I listened to the demos and I saw people that I trust, not like the vent, you know, not the company, but players that I trust. Yeah. And Nick, Nick Lee from Moontooth yeah. demoed it and he's like, immediately it was so easy to dial in you don't have to use all of it oh. the octaves sound great on its own but fuck when he had it all turned in i was like that's like four pedals on my board to get that all in this i wonder room. how it i wonder how it tracks like sometimes with octaves it has a hard time like pedals will have a hard time because of the way that strings the nature of strings yeah and i'm obviously real sensitive to that because it's worse on bass than it is on guitar oh yeah for and sure so, so i went and found some videos of bass demos and it seemed like it tracked pretty well i also don't need the second sub octave to track i'm already yeah. low enough you know i don't really need that but and it's polyphonic so you can play chords too it's not just single note but you can switch back and forth so you can play it mono or poly jd's asleep oh, well. we did it we put him to sleep oh sorry <laughs> what are you talking about but there's some fun stuff on here. Someday, someday I'm going to have to plug in and play. I, I, was, I came up with a little game when I was testing everything tonight, which was I turned two pedals on and it made a completely unexpected sound. And I wanted to make people try and guess what the pedals were that were running to create that sound. But it was the B9, which is like an organ generator. It makes, makes your guitar or bass sound like a bunch of different classic organs, like a Hammond, a, a church organ. And then this TWA Little Dipper is like a really crazy envelope filter but it's got really weird voices and the two of them together made the most bonkers sound that i'll find a place to use somewhere or another i don't think anyone would enjoy that game but me but whatever i would enjoy it you would enjoy it I okay cool i think yeah. i think that's a spin-off podcast you could do sh just short little 15 20 mini episodes and i am an absolute <laughs> phaser junkie and as a bass player i can't just use the mxr 90 because i need dry volume i need to be able to like boost the phase signal with my actual clean volume sound i've played probably 30 phaser pedals i just got this empress phaser like two months ago it is by far my favorite phaser i've ever played in my life so if you if you're out there and you use phasers i highly recommend checking it out there we go oh my god it's so heavy does it have a deep sweep does it have a what a deep sweep like a deep sweep yes it does yeah like, like the bottom part of it yeah so like the sweeps and even the timing so like this the speed knob is here but the switch on top is like really slow medium slow and fast and then the knob so it's got like triple the speed range of a typical phaser and i think they did that with the depth of huh. the sweep too so yeah it's really cool is that the big dipper uh yeah that's what the name of the pedal is See that? Oh yeah. I don't know. <sighs> it was an, it was an exciting project. Oh, it's super exciting. And I love having I'm, And I'm sorry that I imply that you can't own an expensive power supply. <laughs> no, no, that I'm not a serious that I'm not a serious musician. <laughs> yeah, that did not come out right. No. No, I mean one one thing you it's like there's there's all these worlds of people who love pedals and a lot of it on the internet is like bedroom players. And so they love to build these like fancy boards with lights and shit and they route everything so you can't see any of the cables and all the power stuff's routed and then you flip the thing over and it's like a network cabling where everything's lined up all perfect and zip tied. <laughs> and then you set that shit down on stage and you plug it in and something doesn't work. And then you're fucked because you have to yeah. unwind all of that work and it would take you hours to do that. Yeah. It gives me like, like it terrifies me to think about trying to, to figure that out. You need to be able to pull a pedal and and Move quickly and, and reconnect everything if one of them is not working, you know. Yeah, I, I remember I felt so bad for him when uh, Mothership opened 
the main stage at Psycho 2017, and mm -hmm. Kelly started playing, and something went wrong with one of his pedals, and you could just see the panic, and the band kept going, and he was just at his board pulling pedals <laughs> off and pulling plugs and just trying to get it to work, and he did. But that was only because he just had a flat, top-mounted, everything <coughs> accessible, non-bedroom player board. Yeah. A non-bedroom player board. Non-bedroom player. They're so there's appealing. Nothing, there's nothing quite like the feeling of having your gear take a shit when you're trying oh. to. Oh, my God. There's it, nothing quite like that horror. It It's the most panic in a non-life-threatening situation that happens to me in my life is flipping the standby switch on off or and then not hearing anything or not like, being able to hear yeah trying do to do, sing when you can't hear <laughs> do you do you carry your own in-ears so you can monitor yourself i just i you know i just started trying to use in-ears and i'm still trying i mean it's i don't know so i i'm uh mostly or partially deaf in one ear so I'm a little bit special needs that way. Uh, so this, I got this, have an inner setup, but I have another module that connects to it that um, has a mic on it on board, and it, or it, actually it comes with um, ear earphones that have microphones, so you can actually hear what's happening in the room or on stage. Also, um, it has a mode that you can play that way. And that mode is, is built in there so that, you know, if you're talking to your band or your band is talking to you or you're talking to the audience, it sounds more natural. Yeah. But I use it all the time um, so that I can just, you know. Hear yourself. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it's, I just can't hear. It's just yeah. whatever. It's hard. To, it's actually hard to sing clean over really loud guitars and stuff. It's pretty yeah. difficult. Yeah, it's it's really hard. And people who figure out the the monitor situation, like it makes a huge improvement in their in their you know, especially when you're not when you're at the level where you don't have a lot of control over the gear at the venue. When you show up, you just you you book the place and you show up, and what they have is what they have, and you don't know what it's gonna be. You don't it's you just know. a PA. <laughs> yeah, it's like or somebody's... like you know, you're you if you're the band that doesn't get a sound check. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a little hard to dial them um, without that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, well, we don't ever have to worry about being the band that doesn't get to sound check. Cause Why is that? Because you're a, a serious touring we're band. We're a serious touring band, JD. <laughs> that buys uh, three hundred dollar power supplies. <laughs> no, no, we're in that situation. We're <laughs> well, in I that mean... situation all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not, sometimes it works out fine and sometimes yeah. we'll have Billy with us and that helps a lot. He pretty much knows, um, you know, he knows the situation, but, um, yeah. well, sometimes I mean, that... it just, I don't know, it's, just, it's really challenging. That's yeah. what I'll say. That would calm, that would calm anyone down. If Billy's in the room and you know, he can like, listen, he can walk over to the board and talk to the sound guy. Most of the sound people are probably going to have an idea of who he is, even depending on where you are. So I would imagine I w that would be. Lovely. I mean, having him having him there for live sound. I'm just running the board, yeah, yeah. That's um, my favorite. E even better, yeah. I mean, I have a few friends, a few a few people that I know that try to make sure at shows if we don't have control, so that at least I have like a sympathetic set of ears in the crowd who can listen and go like manage what we can manage from the stage. You know, we're not always going to be able to deal with any every problem, but at least somebody with decent ears can go like, hey, "No man, nobody can hear you." <laughs> like, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that yeah, that was my big exciting project. I hadn't cleaned. It was so gross. I hadn't cleaned those pedals in so long. And by the time you take them out of the studio and then look at them under real light, the tops of the pedals were so disgusting. <laughs> like everything got a scrub down and a, and a wipe off and a little bit of deoxit so that there's no noise in the knobs it was like it was like a pedal maintenance day i don't so do any i don't usually but i it was like finally we we went to record something and my main fuzz was all dirty inside and it was cutting out and i didn't have any mm -hmm. deoxit handy so we just had to turn the knobs for like five minutes to yeah. to, clean it, to clean it up but i was like let's just clean them up it's easy enough. Turn the knobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta change. I need to change my board too, but I just keep putting it off. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was the same way. I mean, I walked into practice on Tuesday, 
and like one pedal was like kind of hanging off and I had switched one. There was one that was over on the side and there was a cable that wasn't long enough. So it was like at the wrong angle. Oh, and, God, no. and I was just like, I need to sloppy. I need to fix this problem. I'm not enjoying this at all. So, ah, the joys of being in bands. Don't, don't use pedals if you don't want to deal with that shit. I love them. It's true. I, I absolutely love them. When I get more pedals, I'll eventually get a board. You know I what? Got I got my finally... one pedal right now. I got to the point where I, I accepted what people had been telling me for so long that I need to get an, have an amp that has a distorted channel. Like I would complain about pedals and people would tell me, you know, because I was constantly buying an, another fuzz, another distortion, trying, just trying to get this like distorted tone that I wanted. And people would be like, you really ought to just, you know, get a channel switching amp or whatever. Yeah, amp distortion. But I was like, and I was like, no, oh, because I got to have a good clean tone, you know, that's important too. I can't just play a Marshall or whatever. Anyway, finally I got an orange amp uh, and, and holy shit, I don't need a distortion pedal anymore or a no. <laughs> I don't need that. And they can, tr you, I mean, I love pedals and I love all the pedal builders of the world and you can do really amazing things when you're building distortion and fuzz pedals but they don't sound like real tube distortion. They just, it's just not the same. It doesn't. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I ever thought that's what I was looking for until I played it. And then I was yeah. like, Oh, this is what, you know, oh. this is. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I get jealous. Our guitar player, Carl is the opposite of me. He, all of his tone come like if, if you took away his pedal board, he'd be bummed because he wouldn't have his wah and he wouldn't have his roto vibe, but that's all he uses. And everything, all the rest of the tone is just out of the amp. And so he's so picky about his amps. But but once that settled, he just has a little tiny, you know, little two rocker pedals on a on a thing. And if he didn't have them, he'd be fine. So. Yeah, I don't I know. I I kind of started. I immediately was into pedals because I was like, I would hear other guitar players like and think they were like with delay. I would be like, God damn, how are they playing that? You know. And then I got a delay pedal. This was early on, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> they're not they're not playing it." <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "That's cool, you know. I like that stuff." So. Well, and if you do a lot of ambient stuff like that, you're not going to have a amp with a spring tank in it for reverb. You know, it's not 1960 anymore. You're probably going to have need a reverb pedal on your board somewhere. And if you want things to repeat, it's a lot easier if you just step on the button and and they repeat for you. And you can create really neat stuff with that. And people get really good at using the entire system of their instrument a lot of a lot of players look down on people who rely on pedals i mean you yes, can just simply do. you can just simply create sounds that you cannot create without them and if that's the sounds you want to make then that's what you need there's just there's no way around it i once had a dude feel my fingertips and then tell me that i, w I wasn't a real guitar player oh, <laughs> God. that was when i worked for uh MCI, that phone company, doing oh, telemarketing, yeah. doing telemarketing, and this guy does that, you know, and I and I'm like, I bet, I wonder if he like has made any albums since then, <laughs> or ever, or ever, <laughs> or, <laughs> or if he's just the he's just the guy at Guitar Center, like fake <laughs> fake shredding for hours on the weekend, hoping somebody will notice. <laughs> I like those Dude. guys. Actually, there's a level up from those guys. If you if you ever really? rent space in a rehearsal studio, no, the level up is the oh. guy who rents space in the rehearsal studio just to go into his space and shred by himself nonstop. I mean, that's a level of commitment. But then he doesn't get the attention he needs from well, all he, of the passerbys at Guitar Center. I'm sure he still goes to Guitar Center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes and practices when he's going to go play at Guitar yeah. Center. <laughs> Oh. For his gig, <laughs> he like does a gig on the weekends at Guitar yeah. Center. That guy, that guy, is, that guy is, is trying to find bandmates on Craigslist. <laughs> oh my god! That's, what would Guitar that's, Center that's, do if a band just walked in and set up and just started playing? Oh, that'd be amazing. Just all, like, <laughs> all quietly, like go into the bass room and go, "Hey, I want to check out this <laughs> bass," and then go and grab a guitar and an amp near there, and make sure there's a drum set set up, and then just fucking start. Honestly, they would. I mean, I'd would be, they shut you down? It'd be amazing. <laughs> Maybe when you got like three songs in. <laughs> that, I mean, that would be you, awesome. You could, you could a wall of looped noise as loud yeah. as possible. 
Yeah. That's I like, need to, like, yeah. put out flyers yeah. appearing this weekend at Guitar Center. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to demo these six looper pedals, please. <laughs> Why do you need to do that all at once? That's weird. I don't know. I think our, I think my local guitar center would be into it. I was, I was once in there. I forget what sweatshirt I was wearing, but the dude goes, "Hey, man, fucking rad sweatshirt. Listen to what I just put on." And he put on Electric Wizard, and I was like, "Yes, nice, all right, good." What's your neighborhood guitar uh, guitar center? So there's two. There's one on Stevens Creek in Santa Clara, and then there's one um, on Blossom Hill Road in uh out farther south in san jose and i don't go there for most things because we have starving we have starving musician i have the hat on uh and guitar showcase which are both like locally small owned small owned family owned businesses not giant megacorps but hey if i can stick it to guitar center for a for a um, warranty replacement or a, a, a refund or whatever i'm i'm all for it like the the guitar player from dumbwaiter killed me all right this guy first guitar he bought when he was 16 was a seven string Ibanez that everybody shits on and makes fun of. So he'd never stopped playing it because he thinks it's funny that people make fun of his guitar. And then he bought a crate, um, like combo amp that he was playing through and some guy made fun of it and said, you should get a cool, <coughs> cool amp, like an orange or something. So he took it apart and sprayed the spray paint in the cabinet orange <laughs> and, and then brought that as his, or- his orange <laughs> amp. His orange amp. And then it stopped working when they were on tour and he would go, he would turn it on and it would play for a couple minutes. So he went and sold it to the to guitar center because they demoed it and it worked fine when they when they checked it out and they bought <laughs> they bought his broken amp off of him. So, wait, fully so, so this guy was touring with like a little practice amp. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the. I didn't ask too many questions. The story was hilarious and maybe he had other stuff too. I don't know. I think he did because I he, had a boyfriend that. Yeah. I had a boyfriend that dumped like a drink on his line six delay modeling pedal. So he went to guitar center and bought another one and then just took it apart and replaced the innards. Oh yeah. And then, and then returned it. Returned it. Yeah. I, I love those. That that was the old Costco gambit. Super Bowl Sunday, buy the TV on Friday. Buy the 85 inch TV. I don't know. This thing didn't work. Take it back. It's fine. They, those, those companies had plenty. Yes. Do we have more music? Yes, we do. We have more music. Yeah, we, we have time for us to listen to a couple oh, more songs. Um, we, so we, I just want to say before we get started that I didn't mean to like totally shit talk the folks at Psycho Las Vegas. Oh no, you didn't. And Evan, I didn't think of that way at Evan, all. Evan will never hear this, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a. It's just you know, festivals are difficult. Can be pretty difficult, and yeah, that one I found, I found that one a little difficult just because I did. I don't like. The desert. Vegas. Yeah, they they acknowledged that the merch setup that year wasn't great. They did it differently the year before. The bands complained because not being able to have a person at your own merch table means you sell a lot less merch. Mm-hmm. Honestly, people like to come and talk to the band and buy some merch and having to move your yeah. shit in and out and not have it up all weekend is a bummer. So that's I, I mean, mean the, the, they've you learned. Couldn't even, you couldn't even find what you wanted, and at least if there was in a situation like member was able to be at the table you could be like oh there's that in a bells or there's that dude from voivod you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah although voivod could be at their merch table <laughs> you'd be surprised Some... they have, they, they've got a dude no they got a dude for that they got a mer- dude. i mean merch mike merch mike i don't know merch steve yeah, no, I mean, if a festivals like that are hard, and they run, they ran that, I, we haven't been since they moved to the Mandalay Bay, but they ran that thing with a pretty small crew, so they had logistics problems. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just the way it was, and e- every band, almost every band had some sort of complaint. It's not like they didn't, they know, they know like, they didn't get Zeal and Arter's tracks to play, so they had to do their entire set with no backing tracks, and that's a big part of... Wow. It's a big part of their, it's their a big music. Part of their music. <laughs> we talked to Manuel after it, and he was so bummed. And we were like, "I get it. I understand you're bummed." We were in the audience. It was fucking awesome. So, just take that for uh, whatever, for whatever you will. <laughs> but yeah, and, and I couldn't hear. I couldn't, I couldn't hear anything at, during our set there. Yeah, yeah, and, and like it was also kind of a stressful setup and shit. And I guess I like looked so stressed that I bummed out the sound people or whatever. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I, 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 it was weird. And 
I have video. Um, we can yeah. we we can go back to so, the tape and tape yeah. and see. <laughs> I already, um, I've already seen. I've already no. No, you're good. I've seen it all. <laughs> it's as bad as I well, remember in, it. In that room, the gear by fucking Saturday afternoon was destroyed. Oh. Like nothing worked. Uh, you know, and they weren't getting replacements for a lot of it. So it was like, which one of these amps actually works still? Yeah. Which which kick drum doesn't have a hole blasted through one of the one of the heads? <laughs> no. It was really sweet because Nate got up there and like tuned tuned that kit for Brian, and so that was pretty awesome. Oh, and, nice. then, and then and then Matt Pike was giving me the lowdown on the orange head, which yeah. was kind of funny. Was, yeah. He, he was like, he did all this stuff, and then I was messing with it, and then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. He was he was there because Alyssa was playing bass, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, not that he wouldn't have been there otherwise, but it seemed it seemed like they were, pre- they were pretty locked. Yeah. <laughs> they were pretty locked in. He wouldn't have been. That was the year they got married, wasn't it? I don't think we were. No, there. no. no. It was the, oh no, it was the next year before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, was he okay? It was some year. They because they got married in the chapel at Mandalay Bay. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was still with the Hard Rock when they did. No, nope. she was well, one of that, our. You know... She was one of our first ten guests, maybe. Uh, she was in the very first batch of guests. She's rad. Um, that was that was the show where we went, met Martin from Prophecy, and he liked the set and asked us if we wanted to work with prophecy oh, nice. oh that's cool yeah we we somebody oh matt bacon introduced us to him too oh, at, yeah. at, at some point to martin yeah He's, i think matt is the one that got martin to come watch us oh that's good that's matt always connecting folks always abc baby yep always be connecting <laughs> and always be chomping on a cigar <laughs> yeah, always abc <laughs> you know that's the same cigar He's been chewing on the same cigar that for decades. Ugh. Decades. I know he's only like 25. But <laughs> he's been chewing on it since he was five. It's been no. a long time. I, I want to start that rumor. Everybody start that rumor. It's the same cigar. Yeah. He doesn't smoke it. <laughs> nope. Not a chance. It's just a chew toy. Not a chance. All right. Let's, let's blast through. It's part of the branding, dude. Get over yeah, it. Uh, uh, just, yeah. Just fucking with you, Matt. Yeah. Well, we'll, he will have him on someday. I couldn't find the time. He was in London. It was too fucking confusing. <laughs> All right. So we got a couple more here, and then and then we'll move along with our happy lives. All right. We have... Dun, next, we have a band called... Uh, Carmaria. I don't, I don't know what this is going to be. Is it going to be power metal? Uh, do, you, do you want me to read? I, uh, do you want to know? No. Okay. I want to look at the cover close oh, up. I'm really excited about their description, but it's definitely a not for everyone situation. Ooh, is this not going to be for me? I think it might be. Oh, really? I think parts okay. of it are right up your alley. All right. But we'll just have to listen. All right. So the track we landed on is called Morning Star. Carmeria. They're from somewhere far away, I believe, too. Sydney, Australia. Oh. Yes. That's a that's the logo. Mm-hmm. That looks like one of Billy's tattoos, actually. Is what I was going to say, like. I think uh, my wife has that tattoo <laughs> on her lower back. I have. So, I, had, I totally have a tribal tramp stamp. I regret it. Do you? <laughs> you, you always talk to Billy about who does your black work? <laughs> <laughs> Not in work, ink. <laughs> All right. You know, yeah, it, looks like like ink, a, bro. it looks like a sticker from like a, a like a like a car parts place decal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what mine looks like now. It's like pinstriping. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's, it's just you that know. Was a, it was a moment in time. You can mark where you were in your life. Then don't hate no no regrets. I think there and there is a new version of the tramp stamp too. I don't remember what it is, but oh, there is a new tramp. There stamp. have there have been a bunch. There's yeah. the finger mustache. <laughs> The, f- the finger mustache for sure. Um, everyone between a certain age group has a Deathly Hollows Harry Potter tattoo. Yeah, this is true. I mean, it, you, if you just start looking for them, you'll yeah. see a billion of them. But not so location specific. That was a the anklet, like the tramp stamp, and then like the like flowery anklet for mm-hmm. a time where what it was like that was what women were comfortable getting because you could wear socks or you know you only showed it if you wanted to. I yeah. think, and it was still. 
pretty frowned upon to, yeah, to have tattoos. Still is. Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Nobody cares. The little heart behind the ear is another one. Oh, yeah. Nautical star. Isn't that like isn't that like hardcore kids or whatever? Oh, Did maybe. The, the, oh, the nautical the stars are very hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> a little thing. Hence a little the thing. nautical star on my nose. <laughs> oh, do you have one? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Let's listen to Carmeria. All right, Carmeria. Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> talking about my tattoo. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. So there's words that you will like. Taking refuge in the hearts of many, afraid to give in to the one with the key to your soul. Beyond the shadows, beneath the soul lies the tattered body in which we were once in the twine. The secret passage beneath the masses, a ruin tainted by the vengeance of a severed tie. Christian metal? No. <laughs> How rude. I don't know. Whoa, the lyrics. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's... Like I... <laughs> Sorry, go it, ahead. I don't, it feels, yeah, it feels really uplifting to me, man. I don't yeah. know. I can go there. I can totally go to that. I go Carmary, to that place. I... Yeah, they fuse gothic and prog power elements to create a cathartic symphonic metal soundscape. It's very symphonic metal. Yeah, I I have moments where this is exactly what I need in my life, and it's not every day, but when it is, like nothing nothing works. Like when you're feeling detached from Jesus, is that one of those no. moments when you need a little bit of this Christian metal in your life? <laughs> no, but look, okay, so that was this that was Morning Star. Let's. There's a lot of different song titles here. Do you see one that anybody about- see one? In rapture. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. See, I want I want to hear the gothier end of what's. I, I had high hopes. I love a little goth in my metal, so I just. Wait, wait a minute. Is sanctitude a word? Sanctitude. I think it's, so. it's it's an attitude of sanctity. You got a sanctity. Ooh, yeah. You got a sanctitude <laughs> attitude. Was that, was that a wiener schnitzel slogan? You, what? you have a wiener dude <laughs> attitude. What? What? It was. Wiener it was. Schnitzel? Yeah, sick to do your hot dog lover. We like we like hot dogs in my house. Sorry, I grew up going to Wiener Schnitzel. I had a Wiener okay. dude attitude. <laughs> Sue me. You, you keep playing the music. I'll look up sick <laughs> Okay, let's hear N Rapture. I could I could go more goth. I mean, that 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 something about the bass makes me think about Duran Duran. Yeah, yeah. But then also the heavy use of I mean I think what I'm hearing is like a choir setting on a keyboard. Yeah, I can't tell what of like the symphonic elements are real live humans, and then what are just keyboards and whatnot. Yeah, um, I I actually like choir settings on keyboards, but not uh used 
trying to be a choir. Yeah. Use them differently, but um, I can still kind of go with them. Yeah, it, 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 like that would be a very that would be a sometimes treat. Like, what is it? Cookies are a sometimes treat. Now that's what Cookie Monster says. Sometimes. Oh, does he say that? Yeah, they ha he had to say, <laughs> at some point, they had to change Cookie Monster's whole thing to cookies are a sometimes food. <laughs> they were worried about the message kids were getting about <laughs> co cookie consumption. <sighs> JD found pictures of them. Um, they are do they're uh, doing uh, it all, uh, the, they're they, doing it all the way. And it, it, it works yeah i mean that is like if i was to picture what that band looked like that is exactly what i would picture them looking all right, like everyone on youtube let's see if you agree you just listened yeah youtube yeah oh where did it go oh god don't this, you hate it when they do that image <laughs> sucks that's a totally different picture yeah yeah see i more goth crazier vocals like like more insane references to drinking blood and wearing lace and stuff. Crazier vocals to make it more goth. Yeah, like more exaggerated. Like the um, oh, it's not like a really more drawn out. Like not like he's already doing the rules. Oh, 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 like oh. yes, where, you, where it sounds like yeah. Dracula. Yeah. More like Troy. I mean, honestly, <laughs> Tro Troy in his moments of. I mean, obviously, I like it. I'm in a band with a guy who sings like half the time, like he's in the goth band he was in for yeah. all of the '80s and '90s. I'm sorry, I called you a Christian metal band, Chimera. Kind of right <laughs> but what if they are? It was actually. Have you guys, it actually have you guys, did. Go ahead. You guys ever listen to that band Vara? V a u r a. No. No. Yeah, it, that's the. Uh, I believe it's Toby Driver. Hmm. God, I hate I hate trying to remember and talk about people's names. Yeah, but I know. um, uh, that you that you would like that huh. that whole their one of their albums. They have an album uh, that is very much nostalgic that way for me. Mm. Anyway, yeah. that's not like, what we're talking about right now. So, yeah, B A U R A V A O V V A U, like I I've gone on record as not being a massive ACDC fan. You know, obviously, I, I recognize that they're important and wrote some great songs. Um, but I wouldn't be a musician or in a band if it wasn't for the cult. And I understand that the cult is just mm -hmm. goth ACDC. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I, 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 you, didn't, you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I've never yeah. heard that analogy. Go back and listen to the cult again. The cult. I've actually been listening to them all week. <laughs> I fucking love the cult. Oh, I do too. I love Southern the cult. death cult. Uh, yeah. <laughs> diff, diff, difficult <laughs> well that's where they started right yeah <laughs> was it wasn't that the original name of the band i don't think so yeah i think no, yeah I think it then, was and then they and i think the band was a little different too oh i yeah. thought southern death cult was an, an actual active band mm, all right um, so hmm. our la our final submission Ooh. coming all the way from Rotter rotterham in the united kingdom the band is called Chapel Flood. It's got kind of a churchy theme going. It's a lot of chapels. It's more and... Christian metal. <laughs> I don't think so. We should do an episode. Called we got make us like Christian metal. <laughs> Born on the banks of the dawn in the washed-out sludge of a forever flooding northern wasteland. Wow, that, that's a good start. All right, we play happy pop music. All right, really? So, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I made the last part up. Uh, so Thousand Year Stare is the name of the song again the band is called Chapel Floods and I, right. I don't know what it is Phaser love oh, Phaser what?
their vocals, or do you think it's instrumental? I think it's instrumental. I really like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it too. I like there was one chord in that intro progression. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was like it was like not major exactly, but it was a happy chord in the middle of a, a whole not happy riff cycle and so sort of like Was that I noticed you, that. You're you I saw your head kind of oh, My head kind of like That was weird. I wasn't expecting oh, okay. it to sound like that. Yeah. I don't know exactly what the chord was. What you just said did not go through my head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you feel it though. This sounds sad. But no, you totally do. No, it sounds kind of hopeful. Oh, it's kind of happy now. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I feel like the vocals also sound really kind of like um, cel celebratory. Or... Hmm. Yeah. I like yeah. it actually. Yeah, it they're not angry. Well, it had kind of an Alice in Chains feel. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some parallel fifths in the harmonies and and mm -hmm. just that that matched high low. It was a little more like Elephant Tree esque. The vocals, I think, where it's not like the growling. And no. The, yeah. Huh. Singing, but it's still distorted. I I really like it. I liked it it's, a lot. I think it's, let's listen to a little bit more. Let's do, please. It's almost like a Nirvana chorus, pre-chorus or chorus. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, all I hear is bleach. All I hear is like <laughs> neg negative creep and yeah. There's totally yeah. Like in that the the way those harmonies are done, mm -hmm. huh? I mean, it's the '90s. Yeah, it's it's back. It's funny because at first I I didn't even I wouldn't have noticed that at all. I was just like, oh, it's kind of a cool little sludgy doom, and then it started yeah, it completely. Well, I mean, Kurt did a lot of that. He was always trying to write a happy, like a happy, shiny chorus, and you know, I mean, but then. There's like crushing sadness all around it. Yeah. But then you'd hear it. It sounds like Doom Pop. Yeah. Mm hmm Indeed. Doom Pop. Doom Pop. We have a I might like I like this the best so far, I think. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah, our our, uh, our good friend Luke Lucas French has a band called Laser Beam and that's how he describes it as Doom Pop. It's not Oh yeah, exact. and the cult. They were called Death Cult, Death not cult. Southern Death, Death cult. cult. Okay. Ah, uh, there we go. That's what I thought. Okay. Dozens of people were screaming at us from the internet. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Southern Death Cult were some weird English people. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you were, you were right. Death I was cult. right. They are ah! not bad. All right. I want to hear a little bit more. I mean, Crooked News to me sounds like it could have been the title of a Nirvana song. So I want to hear a little bit of this. What's up? It's kind of like laughing hyenas. Yeah, it's the it's crazy. Is that even the same singer? I think so. It's like it's it's like a, I mean, well, the, the music sounds the same, but the vocal style is so different. Well, if they were doing, if they had two people doing those harmonies, it could have been 
another voice that one of the two yeah that's true i don't know i I feel like that was someone who just spent like three years in a closet listening to bleach and (laughs) tad and early melvin's records and then was like all right here's what we got here we go like the the grunge that didn't make it out of the pacific northwest exactly and on the grunge that only the people that dug deeper found yeah yeah exactly (laughs) that's great I, I believe we're, I think Laughing Hyenas were Chicago or somewhere like that. Oh, yeah, they were one of those Chicago noise bands. Um, weren't they? Um, I was a fan. I can't even Looking remember. Looking them up. Um, John Brannon, Jim Kimball, Kevin Strickland, Larissa Strickland. These are not names I know. Oh, Jeff. I mean, it just reminds me of that stuff, but I don't know. But I don't. I could be drawing. No. I could be- oh no, completely. But, but, but I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Now this borders on a lot of that like noise rock, from. They made that- two records with Butch Vig before he recorded Nirvana. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> Laughing yeah. hyenas, right? Yeah. 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 No, that all that all tracks. I li- I like that a lot. Thank you for submitting music. Everyone, really everyone, thank you for submitting, but those guys especially. Yeah. Well, no, not even them especially. Just everyone. I'll just I'll just <laughs> call it there and not make anyone <laughs> sad. All right. I think we did it. Did we do it? Yeah, we did it. Did oh, we make it? Oh, this will be fascinating. We always we always like to ask a question, but I, I have a feeling <laughs> you're not gonna have a if you really well, you can expand your boundaries <laughs> like like the were there texas bands that you loved growing up once you got into music or was it just get me out of texas quick like who, no who... all right so let's hear i used to be a huge fan of anything trans syndicate like ed hall paintings butthole surfers i mean that noise rock thing you're talking about is sort of uh, was hugely important to me, like yeah. Jesus Lizard. They're not from Texas, but they played with those bands, and they were associated in that scene. Mm. But I it's just right off off my head. I would the first one that comes to mind is like Ed Hall, and then Butthole Surfers. Um, there yeah, was a band forget. called Crust. Oh, Crust, nice. I forget Butthole Surfers are from Texas. They're fucking Texas heroes. Texas heroes. Yeah, yeah. I I um I spent a lot of time in Texas when I was a kid because my dad's whole side of the family came from there, and uh, it was it's definitely a, it was an interesting place to travel to as a kid from California. But like, oh, this is different from where I live. <laughs> By a, a I lot. mean, there's a lot a lot of in in, in Texas at that time like when i was going to shows at that time and it was pretty wild like the shows were were pretty it was fun i don't know if i'm just remembering that them that way because i was young (laughs) or if like uh you know if it did if it was actually different or if i'm just different i don't know but it's a it's a really i remember that time period fondly when all those bands were because it was like heavy music that didn't actually Conform. It wasn't like metal, but it wasn't also mm-hmm. like indie rock. It was, but it was still pretty hard. You know. Yeah, I, I didn't. When I first heard like whatever Butthole Surfer songs came on MTV or like Green Jelly, or I didn't know what to do with those. I didn't know how to what compartment to put them into. It didn't. It didn't. Fit it didn't into one. fit in with anything else that you know they seemed to be playing, and it seemed like oh, this is cool. This is weird. They'd like, get played on 120 minutes and headbangers and ball. headbangers ball. <laughs> Yeah, they needed a new I show. Mean, yeah, and then like you know, like Ed Hall and Jesus Lizard. Really, it was they were great bands. They were just mm-hmm. great bands. Good shows, good times. The yeah. shows were always crazy. I, I missed out on the Jesus Lizard and never saw them live. Yeah, yeah. I saw nice. them in Dallas with like maybe like. A show that was obviously under promoted before they were really well known, and uh, and I was watching their set and I was like, "Fuck, not one of those people is 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 better than the other. Like they're all just so good. The bass player, you know, the whole band is, you know, 
away, and then this kid jumped off the stage, and 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 there was nobody to catch them. He just oh. kind of went into the dr- like some drums that were stacked over to the side. And it was, oh, How many it was really sad, you... but anyway, that was a really good show. How many people did you say were there? You think? Ten. 15 oh people that weren't oh. associated with the bands. It Holy was really shit. Really bad. It was not well attended at all. But it was early That's on, insane. too. Yeah. Even wow. Jesus Blizzard played some shit shows like that, I guess. Yeah, yeah of course. I think. If, course. I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, it was at a venue that we didn't typically go to, or maybe had just started booking the kind of shows that we might want to see or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even remember what the venue was, but it wasn't Trees, which is where I would see those bands at, later, you know? Gotcha. I saw I saw Jesus Lizard lots of times. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even the couple times I saw them, it was in like two to 300 cap venues. And those shows were always insane because they were packed. <laughs> just like, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Everybody's just going crazy. It's like a sweat fest. <laughs> oh, God. When do you think we're gonna, when do you think we're going to do that again next? Oh, it's going to be another. It's going to be a while. You think? I mean, I every wait. time I talk, every time I run into somebody and actually get to talk to them, I almost feel like this weird, like, like sort of intensity about the social interaction. That's like, like, I can't stop talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like almost like I'm trying to hurry and say all the things or whatever, because I have to go away from them or I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I feel like maybe I, I don't even, it's kind of a little bit weird to hang out now. Yeah, yeah. But then you hear from people who say like, "Well, we went to Florida for the weekend, and for the first hour, I was kind of like this, and then three hours in, and I was just like, Wee! shirts off, just back to <laughs> back to normal." I was like, "I don't know. We've been to a few shows, and I didn't feel like that exactly." No, <laughs> but I felt I had a pretty good time. I went to um, I went to a show not too long ago before it was before Omicron happened and I had a great time. Yeah. But, yeah we've been... but like packed in and sweaty. I still haven't done that yet. Nope. haven't done that yet. Nope. Got lots of tickets purchased. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn there was one coming up in the next two weeks, but I'm sure it got canceled. Oh, probably. Yeah, what's next on our calendar? Yob in March? Probably. Yeah. Yes, yes. That one will happen. I can tell already that that's, unless something new pops up, which is always a possibility. But if we just keep going down the way we currently are, I think we'll I think we'll be good for, for Yob in March. Hopefully. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah. I know. Awesome. It's... The way that everything is, has yeah. been going. Well, it was really cool to meet you. And I would love to go and see you guys play again someday. So hopefully that please happens. tour soon. That happens, <laughs> or we need to come to Port. Honestly, we need to go to Portland, anyways. I mean, I, just... I'd like to do some kind of what like easy West Coast thing. I would like to do that. I just don't know when. You know, like I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, it feels like I th- I think the stuff that's booked for like March, April, May will happen, mm-hmm. and then there will be another lull and then then it's like is there another variant or is it summer and everyone's partying like there are these things that keep happening that are predictable enough Mm -hmm. that you can kind of see them coming so i feel like as this one goes down we got a couple months where where things will be like kind of (laughs) okay sort of okay so get it while you can get it while you can we we can't live like this forever No. no no you can't no you cannot yep awesome well it was really cool to meet you. Uh, thank you for the, all the work you're doing with the cats. That's yes. amazing. Thank you to your kind, I assume, spouse or partner back there who's listened to <laughs> us blather on for a while. Well, Curtis, he, he's being very patient as usual. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank th- you, Curtis. Thank you. It's appreciated. And uh, have a good rest of your evening, and hopefully <laughs> we'll get to see you guys play in person soon sometime again. Yes, I'm hopefully. missing all. I'm missing all shows, but I could use some uh, some of what I got in Vegas a couple of years ago, or four Do years think... ago now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's been that long. Yeah, um, you should come up, come up. Yep. Yeah, we, we're we're actually 
actively talking about an Oregon trip in a couple of weeks. So we'll we'll see if that ends up happening or not. We won't be playing in a couple of weeks, probably. No, I know, but but <laughs> if you if you do play a show and I can, oh, if we show up, people are playing. Yeah, no, <laughs> you, got, you, pra- you guys have a practice. You have a practice space, right? I, you can come to our practice space. I, I love watch, the pra- practice space show. You watch us like try to figure out uh, a funk version of the well, which Ooh. we were we were kind of playing around with the other night. It's terrible. It's terrible, <laughs> but it, it, it's funny. <laughs> do i know you have a bass player but i do have some funk chops <laughs> there's a reason matt, i matt. have what you say, what'd you say about matt he 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 he's a funky dude oh good good yeah i don't i don't want to steal anyone's job this fucking internet connection is really weird pissing me off yeah you know it was good for most of it yeah like just the end has gotten a little patchy but it's fine a little choppy it you're gonna probably have more people asking to do interviews get get an ethernet cable and then then you can just plug in and hopefully that hopefully that will fix your problem plug in and tune out all right well what did you just say i said plug in and tune out okay sounds good (laughs) I don't even know what that means. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Is that Freedom Rock? <laughs> freedom Rock, bro. Turn it up. <laughs> oh, I miss MTV. All right. That was a perfect way to end it. <laughs> we'll talk to you again sometime. Take care. Good to meet you. Congratulations on the album. Yes. It's amazing. I listened to the whole thing twice today, and I uh, really appreciate your time. Have a great night. Yeah, have Thank a good you. one. I'll talk to you soon on online. A- absolutely. On the webs. Oh, good night. Oh, good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> so I didn't mean to. No, I don't mean to report you. you the, no. If the police come, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Jesus. <laughs> Having some Zoom problems it tonight. It was a hot mess. It's good, though. I like her. I do. I, I could just like the tone of the messages back and forth. I, I could, like, I had a sense. <laughs> I love it. Ah, it's a good record. Uh, everyone listen to a good it. Record. Go back and listen to their old records. They're amazing. If you need like, if you are in need of some catharsis, if you want to listen to something and like unload all your troubles. And then when you're done, they're like outside of your body mm-hmm. somewhere else. That's what it, that's what their music is. If for. you have reached to the me. deer and you need to just, let it all go. Yep. Right. And I, I had here Nader. Nader at the bottom. Nader. I, I, I'd had a cool article. Obviously, we didn't have time. And I don't want to do it now, but I want to bookmark this. Ooh. It's a really cool article in Bandcamp today. Uh, Karina Utomo, who is an Indonesian musician who is, lives in Australia now, but was born and raised in Indonesia, talking about, because this has come up a bunch of times, these are her favorite Indonesian uh. metal bands. So we'll have to speed listen to this sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, but Maybe I've, that could be a short. I bookmarked we'll do it. Do a short episode. Well, I, so I have I have the one I want to do with you. The first half will be a total Ooh. downer. So then this one will be like this will be like a, a good ending. <laughs> Scary. <sighs> All right, everybody. Well, hey, to, to the new people who came on board, and there are a bunch of you, um, with the Mike Shite episode. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Go back through the history. I'm sure a lot of you scrolled through. There are incredible interviews going all the way back to the beginning. Tons of great music. Um, this is true. We're over 70 episodes now. Yeah. I mean, there's at least 150 hours of this bullshit on uh, on the internet. There's a lot of YouTube. There's a lot of YouTube. <laughs> a lot of the tubes. But tell your friends. Yeah. Like, yeah. subscribe. And subscribe. Uh, subscribe, especially, and YouTube is growing. We have not even attempted to get people to subscribe, really. We haven't done any of the normal, like, marketing. or any, It's all just organic base. But we have enough play hours that if mm. we got to a 1,000 subscribers, which would just mean people who are listening anyways subscribe, we could make partner, and that makes our lives a little bit easier. We can't, we, we can't really monetize because all the videos have copywritten music in it, but all of those bands can make money. You could buy us a cup of coffee. Yeah. Just like Jeeves. <laughs> like Jeeves. <Yeah. laughs> Start a Patreon, buy me a cup of coffee. Yeah. Jeeves is in Aries, I noticed. I wonder what, what, what his birthday is. Um, Yeah, what Jeff said. What I said. All of that. Indeed. I couldn't say it any better. 
All right. I just encourage you to do it. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. On that uh-huh. note, this was the latest episode of My Surprise. Hopefully, I sounded better this episode. This is um, me smelling ASMR. JD's feet. We <laughs> out. That's gross. Thanks for joining us for another week of Blind Submissions. See episode description for the links to all artists discussed in this episode and visit their sites to support them directly by buying their music and merch. Share links to the podcast with your friends, especially if they're in bands. Bands! If you want us to listen to your music on a future episode, please submit one song to blindsub at gmail.com. That's B-L-Y-N-D-Sub at gmail.com. Bandcamps linked preferred, but not required. Find us on our social media at Blind Submissions. Full video episodes are available on our YouTube. Remember, we go in blind so you don't have to. Blind submissions. Submissions with Jeff and JD, Jeff and JD, JD and Jeff, JD and Jeff.